do please help me welcome on katie souza tonight how are you doing tonight katie isaiah you're the coolest okay like wow when i look at you my heart swells with pride because it's like you are a mega media evangelist come on deliverance minister and you know you've tapped into the truth that i've known and told people about for years but nobody believed it and you tapped in the truth that we can get people delivered online Come right on. there on YouTube, on Facebook, on Insta, on Twitter. We can get people healed and delivered right there in their living rooms. And so I really appreciate you for working that truth and going for it without any shame, not letting anybody bully you out of it, where you're just like in it. And people are getting free through your ministry. So I really love you and what you do and your family. You guys are awesome. Hey man, thank you so much, Katie. And you know, I don't know if everyone in the chat knows this, but you are definitely a pioneer of deliverance ministry. I remember in 2011, this is 10 years ago, there was no one talking about deliverance that I knew of, no one talking about healing in the soul, no one talking about demons in the soul, no one talking about the spirit of Legion, the spirit of Python, the, sp uh, G the Goliath spirit. I remember your teaching on that rocked my life. The DNA, how we have the DNA of God, all these things I can name that go back 10 years, you were pioneering this ministry. And so, man, I just want to honor you and thank you. I know you also do deliverance in prisons. You have a, a powerful prison ministry. And actually, if you would just maybe touch on a couple minutes here, your testimony, because God brought you, I know there's a lot of new people but you shared last time god brought you out of prison and now you've gone back into the prisons and you're seeing not only deliverance on the internet on the tvs but you're also seeing deliverance in the the prisons tell us a little bit about some of the stuff you're doing there oh well i learned deliverance from the holy ghost when i was in prison i mean you know i was on the street career criminal doing collections for the mob doing collections wow. for other drug dealers doing collections for myself because i was a cook a meth cook cooking math and I was a mess and then I would collect from people that owed me money. Finally, the federal marshals, not the state, the feds caught up with me, put me in prison at, for 12 and a half years and it was there. I mean, I didn't get my, my education by going Come to on. seminary or whatever else. I got my education in a lockdown cell. <laughs> I got my Holy Ghost visitation while I was in segregation for, you know, uh, getting into a fight. Uh, attacking a police officer, whatever it was. And Holy Spirit was teaching me, teaching me what not to do and what to do and how to get free. And so, you know, the reason why I came out the gate from prison, uh, you know, I got, I haven't had a miracle where I got out early from my sentence because the Holy Ghost and God showed me favor, even though I was guilty of my crimes. And so it's like, wow, I came out the gate from prison doing deliverance ministry, I didn't know any better. You know, I didn't know that nobody wanted <laughs> to hear about that. Nobody wanted to do it. Nobody thought it was real. Demons aren't real. Christians don't have demons. Come on. All those lies. Those are lies, lies, lies. We got more demons than the people in the world. Come because on. we're the target of the enemy, amen? So, you know, I came out the gate doing deliverance because I didn't know any better. And then people, you know, started punching at me to give me a black eye. I said, well, you know, it works. I'm going to keep going. And that's what you did. That's what we're all doing. Because we want, our job is to get people free. Come Amen. On. And I believe tonight there's many of you watching that have been going through the same persecution. You say, I've gone to my leader. I've gone to my pastor. I've gone to my church. And instead of what I've seen, Katie, is instead of encouraging people to do, I was on the phone with the pastor yesterday. And he's telling me how they're getting all this stuff, getting kicked out of their nomination. And I said, let me guess what it's all about. It's all about they're starting to do deliverance. And so now, instead of kicking the demons out of people, we're getting kicked out of the denomination because we believe in the ministry of Jesus. And this is where we go, we're talking about tonight, the idols that we've set up in the church, these idols that religion has set up to prevent us from doing the work of Jesus. And I know right. idols are a major stronghold, a major open door for demonic spirits. Demons hang onto these idols. And there's so many of you watching right now that are still worshiping the idols of compromise, worshiping the idols of religion, letting the enemy shut down your praise. And I prophesy over you tonight that you are not going to be silent any longer that the devil is not going to rob you of your victory, rob you of your breakthrough, and stop you from doing what God has called you to do. This is your moment, chat. I feel the Holy Ghost strong tonight. This is your moment to rise up and say, I'm not going to let some religious leader, some religious pastor, some religious yo-yo stop me from doing the work of Jesus. Jesus said, listen, you're going to go cast out devils, and they're going to persecute you and throw you out of their synagogue. He said, it's, it's 
it's the religious people. It's not the prostitutes that hate it. It's not the drug addicts. They love it. It's the religious synagogue that doesn't want deliverance. And so I believe God's going to raise up a boldness in some of you tonight. I believe the remnant is rising up, that there's so many that say, I don't care what religion says. I don't care what this demonic power of religion says. I'm going to do what Jesus has called me to do. And in order to do that, I got to get rid of the idols in my life. I got to get rid of the things in my life that are keeping me bound. And so we're going to talk about this tonight. Katie, you have an incredible book that came out recently called Idols Riot, where you talk about idols in the life of believers. There's many of us that might not even know it. And I believe tonight, one of the things the Lord's going to do is he's going to shine light on idols that you didn't yeah. even know were there. I, mm. I believe this. And listen, this is this might sound crazy coming from a preacher, but Katie, I prayed this before the broadcast. I said, Lord, tonight, show me my idols. Show me, Lord, shine light on the idols in the life of Isaiah Saldivar, because I'm going to be the first one at the altar tonight, shattering the idols, saying, Lord, I don't want any strongholds. I don't want any idols, anything in my life to hinder me. So let's talk about idols tonight, Katie. For those that might be new, what is an idol? What, what does the Bible say about it? Um, and just kind of a little bit about what the book you wrote is about. Well, it's crazy because, you know, we think, oh, idols. That sounds like so Old Testament, like, right? That's not for us today. Oh, it's totally for us Come today. On. You know, an idol is anything that we make in our life that takes up more mind time, more of our physical energy, more of our emotional commitment, more of our money than God does. Wow. And we can make idols out of anything. We make idols out of our kids, out of our family, out of our marriages, out of our ministries, out of our businesses, out, out of ourselves. We make idols out of ourselves. We become our, our biggest idol. You know, money becomes an idol. Possessions become an idol. The way we dress, the way we look, um, all the above, ideas, uh, different thought processes, religion. Religion is a big, huge idol. And the problem that we don't see and we don't understand is what Psalms 106 says. Psalms 106 says that Israel worship idols who were really demon spirits. Wow. So you see, when, when people worship statues and obelisks and, and, you know, gold and silver statues and things back in the day of the Old Testament, they weren't worshiping that statue or that Asherah pole or whatever. They were venerating, worshiping, putting their energy and their thought and their food and their sacrifices towards the demon god or goddess that that thing represented. So when we turn in anything into an idol... Even our kids, okay, and things that we would think, oh, no, no, you know, I love them. But have you crossed over to where now you're unhealthy in your love and you began to idolize them and do things that you wouldn't normally do on a regular, normal basis to love them? You know, when we make things into idols, a demon spirit gets its right to begin to attack us, afflict us, cause us sickness, disease, steal our gifts, take our money drive us to eat, do all kinds of things. I mean, you know, we have to understand this message is for today. And I'm just going to tell a fast story about one of my employees. I have an employee named John Blake. He had this disease. It was like Alzheimer's, but it wasn't. What it was is was excessive ammonia um, built up in his body, made him have Alzheimer's type symptoms. He, he couldn't think right. He couldn't, he forgot how to type. He, w he wasn't able to finish his sentences. His wife would have to do it for him. When he would take a nap, he'd get tired every day. He'd take a nap. He would go into like a coma-like sleep, and they'd have to force him to wake up. They ended up giving him like $1,500 a month in medication to prevent him from going into a coma. He'd watch a movie, and he'd forget the whole plot. I mean, it was a horrible disease. And we prayed for him for a long time and could not figure out what is this, what is this. And then finally, God gave us insight. One of my other employees had a dream where in the dream they could smell ammonia. And so I was like, well, that's weird. And then the next night I had a dream. And in the dream, I could literally smell ammonia in the dream. So I'm like, okay, this means something. So I looked up ammonia. They, they call, they named that chemical ammonia from where it was discovered. It was discovered in the pits near uh, where the temple of Ammon an Egyptian de demonic god was. They discovered ammonia there, so they named it ammonia. So I told, I, I went to my, my friend John, who's my employee, I said, I think I know what's wrong. So we brought him over to my house, all the staff gathered, we laid hands on him and just like played worship music and began to pray for his soul to be free and for that demonic spirit to come out. After about an hour, he gets up, 
right away he notices my mind is clear. Hmm. He goes home, gets in the shower, and normally for his entire life, whenever he would get in the shower, his whole body smelled like ammonia. Okay? But that day he gets in the shower, no smell at all. As the days and weeks go by, he starts remembering how to type. He starts being able to finish his sentences. He starts being able to remember the plot of a movie. He starts improving. Finally, he goes, something's happened. So he goes to three, not one, but three different doctors and has them independently test him. They all, every doctor comes back that his ammonia levels are perfectly normal for the first time in his entire life. You see, I tell this story to show you that idols are alive and well, and they are affecting every part of our life. They're doing things to you that you don't even know about. And that's what we're going to go through today, Isaiah. <clears throat> we're going to talk about all the different things that these idols do. Amen. So, so good. The testimony is so powerful. I like what you talked about too in Psalms, 1, um, Psalms 106. It says, and they serve their idols, which were a snare to them. And they sacrificed their sons and daughters. And this is what you just touched on to demons. So the Bible connects the worship of idols to the sacrificing of their sons and daughters to demons. Now, again, I love what you said because many of us will read that and say, well, that's Old Testament. We would never sacrifice our children to demons. But what are we doing when we spend hours and hours and hours a day at football practice, at cheerleading practice, at this practice, this practice, and we're sacrificing our children to idols. And now our kids are raised. They don't pray. They don't fast. They don't know the Lord. We drag them out of the youth group an hour early because they got to get to school in the morning and we worship the God of the American dream. We worship the God of success. We have no, we have no interest or no ambition for our kids to live godly lives. And we say, okay, you need to make sure you get a good job, get a good career, get a good college degree, all these things. And then Katie, at the end of all of that, it's like, oh, and make sure that you put your family in church. And God always gets the very last. I always say that everything else gets the best of us and God gets the rest of us and we're like giving God our leftovers this is in essence the worship of idols when we put everything in our life before God and then God gets a prayer at the end of the night I mean chat think about this we work through our entire day and almost 3,000 of you guys keep sharing we work through the entire day and then at the end of the day we're like oh hey God how are you uh, please don't let anyone rob my house and please make sure that I sleep good and I get a good night's sleep. And then we ignore God all day long and we bow down and we worship these idols and they come and they rob us. And I, I, I was thinking about when you were saying that, Katie, is many people right now in their body are sick in their body and they're just like your employee going from doctor to doctor to doctor, not realizing it's iniquity, it's sin, it's demonic spirits, it's idols, it's evil altars, it's other areas of our life that the church is not training us the church is not equipping us telling us about these things and so subconsequently we have all these things happening and we don't know how to identify them we don't know how to destroy them and so tonight we're training you guys we're equipping you guys so that you won't accidentally fall victim to idol worship and this is i believe and which is why i think your book is so so relevant for right now is the number one sin in the church is idolatry is the number one sin as believers is idolatry so many of us i was thinking about just the phone back in the old testament when they would worship or bow down before idols they would oftentimes play a sound play a chime play a song and then everyone would have to bow and worship and i thought about bowing down and worshiping is kind of a foreign principle because people don't bow down these days but then i was thinking that every time, number one, we're all so attached to this. This is a number one idol in America right here. We don't let it leave our sight. I know for me, my phone doesn't leave within five feet of me. And then the moment it bings, dings, or the ringtone, which is the sound goes off, every one of us, what do we do? We bow down and we work, oh. we look down. And I believe oh. many of us are bowing down to the idol, Apple, Android, come on, Apple in the garden. We're bowing down before this thing. And I really believe that this phone is going to testify against us on judgment day. We're going to say, Lord, I didn't have time to pray. And the Lord's going to say, I want to call up my first witness, iPhone 13 on the stand. And your iPhone is going to testify against you that you did have time to pray. Lord, I didn't have time to give. And the Lord's like, you spent $1,500 every year on the new phone. You did have time. But, but guys, I really believe that we bow down to the idol of the phone. We've worshiped it. Instagram, TikTok. Now, if, if you want to prove this, Katie, go on. Everybody go on their screen time. And here's what you're going to see. I won't even go on it because it makes me sick seeing how much time I spend on my phone. You're going to see 
Four hours a day, six hours a day, eight hours eight a day. Hours now, a day. what is your God time? What is your prayer time? What is your fast time? And we give God pennies. We give God one. And then we go on Sunday, we give God 1%, which if you guys know, an hour and a half is 1% of your week, actually less than 1% because there's 168 hours in the week. We give God 1% of our week. And then we say, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. And my question is, a believer in what? A believer in singing three fast songs and two slow songs or a believer in almighty God. And guys, this is where we're challenging you to think, to think, to confront your idols and to, to hear these hard messages so that we can break these things. I want to get, come on chat, I want to get delivered from my phone. It makes me sick on how much time. And there's oftentimes, Katie, I'm like, I don't even know why I'm on it. I'm just refreshing. I'm scrolling. I'm babysitting my brain. And it's really an idol that oh God wants God. to destroy in our lives tonight. So let's talk about this. Um, number one commandment, don't worship idols. Don't build things and worship them. Talk, talk to us about it, Katie. That is the number one commandment. And we have to remember that. So God is saying, he says, do not have, um, do not have any gods before me and make mm. for thyself no graven images. We're doing that. You know, you said the phone. I mean, social media, Facebook, Come Insta, on. you know, YouTube. It's become an idol for all of us. And look, you, and you go, well, we're, here we are watching you guys right now. <laughs> but that's different because, because God has ordained that we mm. believers in Jesus take control of the airwaves. Satan is called the prince of the power of the air. We're supposed to be in control of the airwaves. So we should be releasing content that brings freedom, deliverance, healing. And we should be watching content that brings freedom, deliverance, healing. Okay. So if you've got your phone and when you look at your screen time, how much of that was, was used Come to on. listen to God's word? Oh, um, just partake of an amazing, powerful message. It's like, or are we on TikTok? Are we scrolling through Insta and looking at photos and, and doing stuff like that? It's like, well, be productive. Turn your phone into an altar where you can worship God instead of an altar Come dedicated on. to a demon. Amen. I mean, we all so have good. idols. On the street, my idols were guns, money, and dope. Whoever had mm. the most guns, the most money, and the best dope won, and I had all of them. And that's why I won, right? But even as a Christian, I have my idols as a Christian. You know, I do media. I have my own television network, my own television show. I do all the stuff Isaiah does, and I do other things too. And so it used to be where the bathroom counter was an altar to my face and my hair. I mean, I had every single face product, every single hair gel, every single hair, uh, you know, conditioner, mask, whatever it was. I mean, I had the altar to my face and my hair. You know, I've gotten my face down to a couple products and my hair, well, I little, you know, I'm still working on it, right? Still working on it. Okay. But do you understand we all have idols, even as believers, we have idols. And, and we, and again, you have to understand that there are demons behind this. When you turn these things into idols, in fact, I want you guys to chat in right now. Chat in. What is the Holy Spirit telling you right now are your idols? Have you made people into idols? Have, have you made entertainment into idols? Have you made social media into idols? You know, chat in right now because as you do, God is going to start bringing you to that place of healing and deliverance. Look, God wants you to, you know, use your phone and, and, and to use social media. God wants you to have nice things and, and wear clothes and drive a safe, nice car and live in a good house. But, but has it crossed the line? Has it crossed the line? You have to discern where you have crossed the line, where you go out and shop is one thing, but are you shopping all the time and spending your money and it's become an idol to make you feel good? Because that's the thing, Isaiah, that we don't understand. A lot of times our souls get so wounded by the situations we're going through, the traumas that we're going through, the stresses that we're living through, that our souls get wounded and then we make things into idols to comfort the pain in our soul. So a lot of times the root of idolatry is trauma, trauma. Because then you see people, they, they, they're so hurt, they're so wounded, they need something to make them feel better. And it feels good to run to food, it feels good to go shop, and it feels good to get on social media because it releases and helps you deal with the pain, amen? So look, I wanna talk about the stuff that these demons are doing to us, because we don't get it. Okay, so I'm going to go over some scriptures right now that I think are very important for everybody to, to realize. First of all, if you are watching right now and you have any physical problems with your eyes, like floaters, cataracts, 
blindness, dry eyes, loss of vision. If you have any problems with your ears, like ringing, buzzing, deafness, anything going on in the ears, infections in the ears, blockages in the ears, if, if you have any uh, speech impediments, or if you have any issues with your body, like you have a crippling disease, arthritis, pain in, in your back, neck, shoulders, knees, elbows, it could be because you have a demonic spirit afflicting you because the Bible says in Psalms 135 and in Revelations 9:20 that idols are deaf, dumb, blind, and crippled. Let me read you the scripture. Psalms 103:16 says, "Idols have mouths, but they speak not; they have eyes, but they see not." Revelations 9:20 says, "The people did not stop worshiping demons; they're idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood. Idols that cannot see." Idols that cannot hear and idols that cannot walk. So look, we, 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 we want to go out. We want to get healed ourselves of, of eye problems, ear problems, problems with our skeletal systems and all that. And we're praying, we're believing, we're fasting. But then we have these idols in our life. And these idols are deaf, dumb, blind, and crippled. And, they, and when we have idols, they're allowing these demonic spirits to cause these afflictions on us. I'm just going to give you some examples. Let's talk about blindness, Isaiah. Let's talk about blindness. Do you remember the story about, about blind Bartimaeus? He's blind. He's at the side of the road. Jesus walks by. He cries out, mercy, mercy, son of David, mercy. Jesus ends up healing him. I remember when I read that story, I thought, I wonder why, what caused his blindness in the first place. And I noticed in that story, it said that Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus was the son of Timaeus. Timaeus was his father's name. And I thought, that's odd. I wonder why the Bible mentions who blind Bartimaeus' father was. I said, because that's not usually how it works in the New Testament. So I decided to look up the name Timaeus there, and it means this. One who defiles themselves with idolatry. So, see, Timaeus was an idolater. Bartimaeus' father was an idolater. And idols are deaf, dumb, blind, 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 and crippled. So, obviously, Bartimaeus' father was leading the whole family into worship. They would look at these idols. They would worship these idols. They'd spend their time, their energy, their money, bringing sacrifices to these idols. We're doing the same thing. We're bringing our money to buy our electronic idols and our cosmetic idols and our clothes idols and our car idols and all this other stuff. And they were doing that, and that caused Bartimaeus to have a demonic spirit on him that caused him to be blind because idols are deaf, dumb, blind, and crippled. I mean, the Bible is full of examples of this. The dumbness. Okay, what about uh, ear problems? I mean, the, the ear problems, deafness. What about that? Well, remember when Jesus was at the foot of, Mount, of the Mount of Transfiguration, there was a, a little boy there with his father, and the boy was uh, deaf and dumb, and he was an epileptic. Okay, deaf, dumb, and an epileptic. And the father asked Jesus to help him uh, heal his child and deliver his child. And he said, he told Jesus that the demon that was on him would throw him into the fire and into the water and try to burn his son and try to drown his son. Well, how many of you know that back in the day, that's what they did when they were sacrificing people to idolatrous demonic spirits. They would drown them or they'd throw them into the fire. Now the Bible calls this little boy, he was, he was deaf, and he was dumb, but he was also an epileptic. In the Bible, it says he was a, quote, lunatic, lunatic, because it said that when the, when the moon came out, it would cause people to have epileptic seizures. Well, what's the, what's the lunatic? It, it, it's the moon. It's the moon god and goddess, which was one of the biggest, most normal uh, gods and goddesses. The, the moon god and the moon goddess is what people of that day worshiped all the time. That little boy had idolatry in his bloodline. He, he had the moon god on him, the moon goddess on him, and it caused him to be what idols are. They are deaf, dumb, blind, and crippled. It's like, it's all, all throughout the Bible. Even when, even when Paul in Acts 14 is in the city of Lystra, and it says there was a man there crippled from the womb, crippled from his feet. He couldn't even walk. Paul's preaching the gospel. And he looks at that guy and he sees he has faith to be healed. And he goes, stand up on your feet and walk. 
And the guy leaps up. He gets totally healed. He's been crippled since birth. And he gets totally healed. And the whole city freaks out. And they start calling uh, Barnabas and, and, and Paul Hermes and, uh, and Mercury after the gods that they worship. It says even the, the, the priest of Apollo came down and started doing sacrifices to Paul them because they thought that they were gods on earth, the gods that they worshiped. Lystra was an idol worshiping city full of demon idols that were worshiped. No wonder this guy was born crippled because idols can't, they are deaf, dumb, blind, and crippled. Look, some of you right now, you got crippling diseases in your body. You got eye problems, you got ear problems. In fact, put it in on the chat right now. Mm. Put it in on the chat right now. What are you suffering with? Do you have the floaters? Are, do you have cataracts? Do you have blindness in your eyes? Do, are you having problems with your ears? Are you hearing loss, ringing, buzzing? Are, do you have issues in your physical body? I see, I've seen, I've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of physical healings. We're gonna work those miracles at the end of the broadcast. I've seen people's spines move into place. I call people up in the meeting, they line up, I, and I say, is there uh, any doctors, nurses, chiropractors here? And there always is. And they come up and I say, I want you to check these people's back before we pray. And they check their backs and they find out where their backs are twisted or indented or, or bent or, you know, anything like that. And then we, then they go back to their seat. We pray the prayer. They stand up. They come back. The people get checked again by the chiropractors and their spines have moved into place without anyone touching them except for Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And it's because they repented of the idolatry that was making a crippling disease in their bodies. Wow. This is a big deal. We need to get healed of these idols. And we, and then, when then we can get other people healed, amen? I'm bet um, you people are chatting right now. Read some of the chats we're getting, uh, Isaiah, would you? Yeah, there's tons of people saying dry eyes, floaters, discs, ringing in the ears. Um, lots of people saying my spine healing, recurring miscarriages, severe headaches, severe back pain, buzzing in the ears, generational heart disease, cancer, spine, lots of spine disease, which you talked about to me earlier. I don't, I don't think you announced this yet, that many people's bones were going to be healed. And a lot of these people that are coming in here are saying they're having bone issues, spine issues, neck issues, back issues, bone issues. And I believe tonight, this is one of the things God's going to heal. I want to reiterate what you just talked about in Psalms 135, 16, where it talks about they have mouths, but they don't speak. They have eyes, but they don't see. They have ears, but they don't hear. Nor is there any breath in their mouth. But this is what it says I wanted to touch on. It says, those who make them, so make the idols, become like them, so do those who trust in them. So guys, what the Bible is showing us is when you worship and praise and glorify idols, you actually start turning into what you worship. You actually become yourself an idol now what are the spiritual implications the spiritual implications are we have an entire generation of christians who have mouths but don't speak up for god think about this all of you in the chat right now god has given you a mouth to speak his word yet when we're at school when we're at work and guys come on we can't talk about idols and not convict you this is supposed to be convicting tonight we're at our job we're at the family reunion wherever we go we don't speak up for god and we say lord you've given me a mouth it's not like i don't have a mouth i'm in all the broadcasts i'm in katie's broadcast i'm in isaiah's broadcast i know what your word says but there's something stopping my mouth from speaking out it's not like it's not my mouth's not there but there's something stopping me because you've become you've actually become an idol this is what psalms 135 says you become like the idol you've worshiped one verse says and I, I was i don't know the exact reference but it says you become like the worthless idols that you worship so when you mm. worship worthless idols the bible says you yourself become worthless. Now, what does it mean to be a worthless Christian? It means you have no value in God's kingdom. It's like the man, I believe it was in Luke uh, 13 or Luke 16, where the, the gardener says, listen, I planted this fig tree. It's been here for three years and it's produced no fruit. And I'm going to cut it down. And the gardener says, wait, wait, wait. Give me one more year to give it special fertilizer to take special care of it. And if it doesn't produce fruit in one year, then you can chop it down. Friend, this is a picture of believers that spend years sitting in church, 
never producing fruit. And the Lord says, this is why I want to cut the fig tree down. This was the reason the gardener wants to cut the tree down. The reason was it was taking up space and not producing anything. And there's many believers right now that are taking up space. There's 3,200 of you watching. You're taking up space in a church and you're listening to the messages, but you're not producing. And God says, and I know it sounds mean, but this is what your Bible says. God says, you are worthless to me and you have no value. Paul said this, my life is worthless if I don't use it fulfilling the call of God in my life. Friend, listen, your life, listen to what I'm about to say, chat, outside of doing the will and the work of God is worthless. Your life has no value, just living the American dream, living your whole life, not for eternity, and then your life ends up a pile of dust and God looks at you on Judgment Day and says, you spent your life serving this, worthless idols that are gonna burn one day, your life is of no value. But then it says, they have eyes, but they don't see. Now, how many believers in the chat have spiritual eyes? Because the thing is, remember, we all have spiritual eyes. The Bible does not say pray for eyes. It says pray that your eyes would be open. So that means you have spiritual eyes right now, every single one of you, but we have eyes, but we don't see spiritually because we're worshiping idols. This is the attack of the enemy. Why is the devil gonna get you on heroin if he can get you on iPhone? Why is the devil gonna get you on drugs if he can get you on the TV? If the devil can get you binge watching The Office over and over again, why does he need to bring a girl to fornicate with or a guy to get you off track? What's gotten us off track is the idols and because we worship idols, we don't speak, we have no mouth, we don't see in the spirit, we don't stand for God, we have ears, but we're not hearing what God is saying. Katie, this is one thing that blows my mind. How many believers think you're crazy if you hear from God? Go to the average church on Sunday morning and tell anyone in the church you hear from God. I know pastors that tell their members they're crazy because I've heard pastors say, oh, you hear God speak. God doesn't speak today. He only speaks through the Bible. And so if you hear God, you're considered crazy in the church of America. And you guys, of course, we're the radical remnant here. We're all, you know, we all are on fire for God. The, the normal nominal 98% of the church that doesn't hear from God, doesn't speak in tongues, doesn't do deliverance, doesn't do miracles. I don't want you just to think of the remnant here. I want you to think broadly in the American church, hearing from God is not a normal thing. If you go to most Christian or Americans, they say, oh, I'm a Christian. Do you hear God's voice? Well, I've never heard God. Has God spoke to you? Does God speak to you? Many people don't hear God, why? because they worship idols. And because they worship idols, they have ears, but they don't hear. But here's what the last thing says in Psalms, Katie. It says they have no breath in their mouth. And I was thinking just the other day about this as I was studying going, what does it mean to have no breath in your mouth? And, and the Lord said, this is lifeless Christians. The breath is the life of God. Remember in Genesis that God breathed breath, the breath of God into Adam and Adam became a living person, a living being. So the breath in the mouth speaks of the life. And God is saying, when you worship idols, you become a lifeless, fireless, powerless, passionless Christian that has no flavor. And the Bible says when the salt loses its flavor, it gets thrown out to be trampled on. Friend, the reason why the world is stepping all over the church, the reason why we're the laughing stock, the reason why they make fun of us is because we're salt that's lost its flavor and now the world tramples on the church because we're not bringing life. We're called to be life bringers. You should show up to your job and you're happy. You, Some of you need to tell your face right now to smile. You shouldn't need, which by the way, I drink caffeine, praise the Lord for caffeine, but you shouldn't need four cups of coffee before you're passionate. You shouldn't need two rock star energy drinks before you have excitement about God. We need to walk into the house of God with life, with passion. Like I get out of bed with the life of God. I've been given a second chance. I've been born again. The same spirit that raised Christ is living on the inside of me. But what happens is when we worship idols, we lose our passion. We lose our praise. We lose our excitement. We lose the life of God. Paul said, it's no longer I live, but it's Christ. Paul says, I'm dead. And the life I do have in my body is because of God, is the spirit of almighty God living on the inside of me. So I think for some of you that say, how do I know if I have an idol? Well, do you hear God? Do you speak up for God? Do you have ears? Do you have, do you see? Is there life about you? Do you, do you have excitement about you? Now people can call me a lot of things, Katie, but they can't say I don't have passion. That's one thing you can never <laughs> accuse me of. It's like you, Isaiah, you just can't say that because it's the life of God. Jeremiah said, there's a fire shut up in my bones that I can't contain. And so I believe tonight that God's going to open up somebody's eyes. I believe tonight God's going to open up somebody's ears. I believe tonight that the breath of God is going to breathe into you and these idols are going to 
be destroyed. That God is putting a spotlight on these idols. A big theme throughout scripture is putting your trust in idols over God. And this is what you talked about, Katie. Is like, we go to our phone to escape the responsibility of life. We go to the alcohol to escape. So now the alcohol becomes our escape instead of God. But what does the Bible call God? The Bible calls God our refuge, our fortress. What is a refuge? A refuge is a place you escape to during storms. And God is saying, why has your phone become your refuge? Why has TikTok become your refuge? Why is Hulu, YouTube Premium, Disney Plus, Instagram, whatever it is, Netflix, these are now our, and I'm guilty of it as all of you. It's like, I just want to relax, God. Let me have some time off. And so now, instead of relaxing in God and God becoming my resting place, now when I'm stressed out, now when I have uh, financial problems, Katie, now when I'm sick in body, I got to go to my phone to be my refuge. And so now, you know, I got to deal with the kids, but I would rather not deal with the kids. Let me just go on TikTok because it's, it's an escape. It's a refuge. It's a place I can run to to hide. But God says it's replacing me. I want to be your refuge tonight in Jesus' name. Jesus. It's true. It's true. All the things you were saying just are all throughout scripture. I mean, you talked about you know, when we have idols, we or Christians that can't see God, mm. can't can't hear God, can't speak God's word, and 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 that is realistic. That is in Scripture, within in the story where Paul talks about all of the gifts. One Corinthians twelve, he shows us that our spiritual gifts will mm. actually be impacted and lessened significantly lessened when we have idols in our life remember what we already talked about the bible says that idols are deaf dumb blind and crippled they can't see so they block you they make problems in the natural with your eyes they can't hear so they cause you to have ear problems they can't speak so they cause you have speech impediments they can't walk so they cause you to have problems in your physical body but they also cause you to be deaf dumb blind and crippled in your walk and your gifts with god now, I'm going to prove that right now. I'm not just talking smack. Okay, this is 1 Corinthians. This is verse 1 and 2, and I'm reading from the Amplified Classic. This is the Apostle Paul talking, okay? And this whole chapter is about the gifts. Talks about the Holy Spirit, distributes gifts to us, gifts of miracle working, gifts of tongues, gifts of prophecy, gifts of faith, and all of that. And he opens up this chapter with this very powerful statement. He says this, Now, about the spiritual gifts, the special endowments of supernatural energy. Brethren, I do not want you to be misinformed. You know that when you were a heathen, you were led off after idols that could not speak. Wow. Now get that. Why, why is Paul saying that? He, he, he's saying, look, I'm going to talk about the gifts, brethren, and I, I don't want you to be misinformed about the spiritual gifts. You once went after idols that could not speak. What is he saying to us? He's saying, look, the idols that you used to go after are still there in your life. You're still pursuing them. You're still going for it. And those are going to affect your spiritual gifts because idols are deaf, dumb, blind, and crippled. So when you have idols in your life, they cause you to not be able to see in the spirit, to see dreams, to see open visions. To get that that the open-eyed stuff, that that insight where you can peer into the spiritual realm. Idols are deaf, dumb. They're going to cause you dumb idols. They're going to cause you to not be able to speak an accurate prophetic word. Because when we prophesy, wow. our prophecy comes out of the spirit of God in us, but it filters itself through our soul. So if you have idols in your life, when you speak a prophecy, it's going to go through the idolatry and the lust and the connection and the things that the the thing that you have in your spirit that's always grasping after and chasing after idols. That prophecy, the purity of that prophecy is going to come through the idolatry in your soul and it's going to come out and it's going to twist that prophetic word and you're not going to get the accuracy. Okay, idols are, 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 are deaf. The Bible says that means that you're not going to be able to hear the voice of God. You're not going to be here when the Holy Spirit speaks and tells you go to the left or go to the right. And man, when you can't hear the Holy Spirit speak, you know what happens? You don't, you will not succeed in anything that you do. You will chase after stuff that you think you're hearing from God, but it's actually you hearing from your own soul or from that demon that's stuck to that idol that you've made out of your social media or your shopping or whatever it is. 
Okay, so they're going to affect your ability to see in the spirit, hear the voice of God, speak an accurate prophetic word, and idols are crippled. They cannot walk. They're going to hinder you from your walk with God. Meaning that right when you think you're walking good, you're being obedient to the Lord, you, you got it going on, and then all of a sudden, you fall off the cliff. You get tempted again. You fall into that thing where you're chasing after that idol, spending your time on it, spending your money on it going after it not spending time with god but rather spending time you know giving all your attention and your energy to that idol there those idols are going to mess with your gifts including your walk with god now i know people want, that are online right now want to walk in the supernatural gifts of the lord and remember what paul said i don't want you to be misinformed brethren about the spiritual gifts when you were heathen you were once led off after your idols and then he even adds that could not speak because he knows idols are dumb. Okay, so he's warning you right there that these idols in your life are going to stop you down from having your spiritual gifts manifest in their fullness. So good. Wow. So good, guys. I never saw that connection there in 1 Corinthians 12 where the idols are connected to spiritual gifts. And now it makes sense why so many churches, believers, don't walk in the supernatural gifts of God. It's because these idols are hindering us. I wanted to read um, 1 Samuel, Samuel chapter 5 because I believe it's relevant and it's something many of us do after laying down idols. Because by the way, guys, if you're not catching what we're saying tonight, we're going to call you to lay down your idols tonight. We're going to call you to destroy your idols because here's the deal. We can't do it for you. The Bible says in the book of Acts, there's a great revival and they took their witchcraft books, which were their idols, and they burned them and it was $2 million equivalent. So what do we do with idols? Keyword, we destroy them. I remember when I first got saved. I know this is real radical here. By the way, if you're a young person, please don't go break your laptop if your parents paid for it. If your parents bought you something, do not break it because I'll get an email from them. If you have an idol and you need to get rid of it, give it to your parents if it doesn't belong to you. Now, if it belongs to you, go ahead and break it. Go ahead and shatter it, whatever you want to do. But I remember when I got saved and I was an atheist, got radically saved, and the Lord said, break your Xbox, break your, all the stuff that was valuable. I mean, monetarily, I, sp I spent money on it. It cost me. And I started breaking everything. And people said, well, why do, wouldn't you just sell the Xbox and the games and the movies and the music and the laptop? All the stuff I was using to sin, which by the way, if you guys don't know, Jesus said, if your arm caused you to sin, cut it off. So I thought in my head, well, if God wants me to cut my arm off, then surely he doesn't mind me breaking a laptop that's causing me to watch pornography. And so I, to I God told me, he said, don't, you don't sell idols, you destroy idols. And so I think some of you are going to have an urge to purge and you're going to be get ri getting rid of the Buddhas in your house. You're going to get rid of the rosaries in your house. You're going to get rid of the idols. Listen, if you have Jesus, Jesus on a cross, still on a cross in your house, you need to get rid of it. It's an idol. If you have movies, music, video games, whatever is causing you or you're worshiping, causing you to worship it, you need to get rid of it. Maybe you need to lock it up for a time. Maybe you need to delete the Instagram for a time if it's an idol. Now, if it's not an idol, you don't have to get rid of it. If it's not an idol, you don't have to worry about it. For some of you, sports is an idol. For me, you have to, Katie, you'd have to pay me to sit through a football game. You'd have to pay me money. I could care less. I have, I have zero interest in basketball, football. I'm not a sports guy. For the next guy, it might be an idol for him. So for me, it's not a sin to sit and watch a game. For you, it might be. So understand, guys, what, what is an idol for one person might not be an idol for another person. But here's what I do want to say. If God is telling you to put it down, don't argue with God. If you remember what Samuel said, Samuel said, rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. Stubbornness is, of, is as idolatry. So when God says, give up an idol and you're stubborn and you say, I don't want to give it up. That st stubbornness is actually part of idolatry. But let's look at 1 Samuel 5. After the Philistines had captured the Ark of God, so now they have the Prince of God, I just want to point out one thing here. They took it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. Then they carried the Ark, so now the Philistines have the presence of God. They have the Ark of God. They carried the Ark into Dagon's temple and set it before Dagon, which Dagon is a false god. He's a demon god. He's a false idol. He's an actual idol god. And when the people of Ashdod rose early the next morning, so here's the picture, guys. They get the Ark of God. They stick it in the temple of Dagon, Dagon's temple. They put it next to the altar, next to the idol. They went to bed. They got up the next day to check on the Ark of God. And the Bible says that Dagon had fallen down his on his face before the Ark of the Lord. He was actually on his face worshiping the Ark of God. Then this is what the, this is the only thing I want to point out here. Then they took Dagon 
and they put him back in his place. How many of you went to an altar one day, come on, I feel the Holy Ghost, went to praise God one day, God knocked down your idols, God knocked down your, and you pick, and then a month went by and you picked your idol right back up. And God is saying, stop picking up what I'm knocking down. Stop bringing up the idols. If I've knocked down the idol of vanity, the idol of social media, the idol of the NFL, the idol of music, the idol of your children, the idol of your wife, stop going back to the idols at Dagon. Now here's the interesting thing about Dagon. I'm sure you know this, Katie, but many people in the chat, 3,400 of you praise the Lord are watching, probably don't know this. Dagon was half fish, okay? From the waist up, he was fish. And from the waist down, he was man. So half fish, half flesh. Now, the reason why he was half fish, half flesh is a representation of many of us. The part that you can't see, which is the waist down, is fleshly. That's the hidden areas of our life. And the part that people can see is the fish. And it represents believers, because the fish represents believers that are half in and half out. And the part that people can see is the Christian you. Praise the Lord, brother. It's the fish part of me. It's the fish where you could see, and I'm a believer, I'm a Christian. But then when you go home, what about at home when no one's around? The flesh part, the waist down, the part no one can see. And that's the fleshly part of you, the worldly music, the worldly culture, the way you talk, the way you act when no one's around. If your pastor, now this is where we're going to get in trouble here and the kitchen's going to get hot right here. If your pastor asked your children about you, what would your children say? Is daddy the same way at church as he is at home? Is mommy the same way at church as she is at home? What is it? It's that we bow down before Dagon. We've worshiped half fish, half flesh. We're half in and we're half out. And tonight in Jesus name. Now the story, I'll spoil it for you, ends up being where they keep picking it up. Finally, the idol breaks, okay? Eventually, you're going to have to ask the Lord, Lord, I need you to break this idol in my life. And this is where the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit wants to shatter the idol of Dagon, the demon of Dagon, this idol God. God wants to break it tonight in Jesus' name. Katie, here's what I want you to, to just touch on here because I can't talk about it because I'll get in trouble here, is the food idol. How many of us worship food how many of us i can't talk about it because i don't hardly eat i eat about once a day if that so i struggle i have no appetite ever so i can't talk about food idol but how many people have you dealt with have you seen in your ministry time that run to the idol of food i know for many in the chat right now this is a major idol especially in america yeah okay i do i want to talk about the food idol, but i have to bring you one thing about day yeah. look you guys you're, you, you, if you're in warfare right now, like heavy duty warfare, and it just always seems like there's warfare, warfare, warfare going on. This is happening, that's happening. This problem, this demonic t attack, this sickness, this lack of your finances. It's just you're creating your own warfare. Because when they brought in the ark to be right next to, and they put it, they had the nerve to put the presence, the ark, the most holiest altar in the world next to an altar with a demon God to worship a demon God. When you bring the two next to each other, warfare is gonna happen. So right now what you're doing is you're, you're worshiping, you're praying, you're reading your Bible, you're doing this, you, you've got the altar to God that where you're worshiping him in your house, but then you still have your idols in there. And when you have an idol, an altar to an idol next to an altar where you worship God, there's going to be warfare. There's going to be warfare. There's going to be sickness. There's going to be attack. There's going to be lack. There's going to be things that happen to your family. There's going to be crises. There's going to be traumas. Stop creating your own warfare. You got to get rid of that idol. That you got to get rid of those idols, and you got to just establish the altar of God in your life. And just as an interesting side note, when when the when the um, when the Philistines said that's it, we got to return this ark. You know why they did that? Not only because Dagon ended up on his face broken, but the whole city got afflicted with hemorrhoids, which are, which are uh, hemorrhoids, and tumors, and plagues. So we see people with cancerous tumors, with hemorrhoids, with growth, with, all, with, with sicknesses get healed when these idols come out of their life. Because these idols bring cancer tumors. They bring this demonic manifestation of these kinds of growth and hormones, hem hemorrhoids, and all these other things. Okay, so now let's talk about food, okay? Let's talk about food. Look, one of the biggest idols is food, guys. Look, I'm not saying you can't eat, you can't enjoy your food, but you'll know if you've made food into an idol because you can't stop thinking about it. 
you can't, it's like, I, I totally have food idols, all right? It's like, I would eat a dinner, a plate that could feed like a man four times my size, and I would still be hungry. When I was done, I would think, okay, that was really good. Now I need some sort of a dessert. I need something sweet. I need some like a chocolate or I need something like that. And I'd eat that. And then after I was done, I'm like, oh, that was really good. That sweet thing was just what I needed. But now I, I think I need something salty. Salty. Yeah, that's right. I, and then I'd go get pretzels or chips. I mean, I was constantly thinking about food, eating food. I mean, I'm not a very big person. Good thing I have like a high level of metabolism, right? But I had food idols. And that is, food is a huge idol. Why do I say that? Because in the ancient times, anytime they went to worship gods or goddesses, they always brought a food item or food items to sacrifice to those demons, okay? I mean, like, no offense against anybody, but if you go into a nail shop, they always have their Buddhas and their stuff out. They're gods that, you know, they're frogs that they want to, hopefully they're believing that they're going to bring them prosperity. And every day they bring them pots of honey, pieces of fruit. Like, oh, are you hungry? You can't go to the grocery store for yourself because you can't walk. Because that's how helpless you are. So I'll bring you a bunch of food. Okay, it's like they're always sacrificing food. Do you remember when the Israelites were at the foot of Mount Orb? Uh, Moses is up there getting the, the Ten Commandments. And what are the people doing? They're fashioning a golden calf. And the Bible says that they, wrote, they began to eat and drink, and they rose up to play as they worshipped that bull god. Okay, it's like eating, drinking, food was always an intricate part of worshipping those demon gods behind those idols. Now, I want you to listen to what Paul says about this. This is in the New Testament now, okay? 1 Corinthians 10. He's talking about idols. He says, food offered to idols. Is it intrinsically changed by the fact or amount to anything? Or is that idol itself a living thing? No, what I'm suggesting is when pagans offer food, they offer it in effect to demons, to evil spiritual powers, and not to God at all. And then he says this, listen very carefully. And I do not want you to fellowship and be partners with diabolical spirits by eating at their feasts. You see, every time, oh my gosh, these demons are used to people sacrificing food to them. So they are constantly talking. You're still hungry. Now you want something sweet. No, no, now you need something salty. Oh, you aren't satisfied. Make some popcorn. Oh, that was good, but you should have a soda with it. And they're constantly driving you to try to sacrifice food to them because they've had that happen throughout history. Okay? And, and Paul says that when you come into agreement with them and you begin to eat at their feast, you are, quote, fellowshipping and partnershipping with diabolical spirits. We got to watch it, guys. I mean, look, you can always tell. If you're thinking about food all the time, <clears throat> in fact, chat in right now. Are you always thinking about food? Are, when you eat something, do you think you still need something else? Or do you eat super fast? Do you, are you addicted to sugar or to junk food? You can't get enough of going to the donut shop? What is it? because you're probably being driven by a demonic spirit. You came into agreement with that spirit, and now you are fellowshipping and partnershipping with that diabolical spirit by eating at its feast. Wow, Katie, so good. I know there's tons of people in the chat. This is a major thing, guys, and here's the thing. We love you so much that we're gonna tell you what many preachers will not tell you, and we're going to preach the message of the gospel, which breaks and confronts idols. There's warfare, Katie, I love what you said. There's warfare that breaks out. One of the things I wanted to point out with the story you were talking about with um, Moses getting the Ten Commandments is when they were coming down from the mountain, the Bible says Joshua looked at Moses and said, it sounds like there's war happening in the camp. And Moses oh. said this, it's not the sound of victory. It's not the sound of defeat. It's a party. It's a sound of celebration. And I think if we're not careful, Katie, we could think as a church that we're the spiritual warriors that we're at war when really we're celebrating and worshiping false idols. And if we're not careful, we'll call the parting and the worshiping of idols warfare. Because here's the thing, we say we're at war. We're like, we're Christians, we're at war. 
But what is the war about going to church once a week and reading maybe our Bibles at Starbucks? We don't cast out demons. We don't fast. We don't pray. So a lot of us think we're at war. We're spiritually fit but we're really just parting to idols. And this is a thing we have to worry about and be careful about is that we're not deceived in who we really are. Katie, I want you to touch on one last thing before we start praying, because I know there's many people in the chat that are ready to be ministered to. Touch on the evil altars in the soul. This is something, by the way, let me just say this before you go on this. Guys, you need to get this book. We are scratching, scratching the surface of all the revelation in this book. This book will change your life. You need to get it. I've linked it in the description. It links you right to Katie's website because this book, of course, if we went through the whole book, we'd be here for t 10 hours, 15 hours. Right now, we're scratching the surface. I know the whole time, We've had over 20,000 comments come in, by the way. There's 3,500 of you. And this entire time, you guys are like, wow, wow, wow. I'm, I'm thinking the same thing, Katie, as you're talking. I'm going, wow, wow, wow. But understand that this is revelation from God that's going to bring you into victory. So make sure that you grab the book if you want to go deeper into this and you want to rid yourself of these idols. But talk about this, Katie, the evil altars that are in the soul. Well, every idol had an altar. Mm. Okay, so the altar is where this where the demon god was worshipped. That's where they put the obelisk, where they put the statue, where they put the asher pole, and that became an altar. And every altar had a human attendant. Mm. I mean, you just didn't build an altar and walk away. You had to have a human that would attend to that altar, that would come and bring the sacrifices, that would come and bring the food, that would come in and bring the oil, that would, that would come in and do the worship, that would come and attend to the altar. And so that's how it looked like in the Old Testament. But now those altars are in our soul. Mm. And we are attending to these demonic gods by constantly serving at those altars. Our soul goes and says, okay, how, how do you serve at the altar in your soul? And let's say you have an, an idol of shopping. Okay, so wow. Anytime you have a problem or anything else, you got to go serve that altar. Wow. You got to run out. Wow. You got to go to the mall. And you don't just get the stuff you need. You start Come getting on. stuff you don't need. Okay, it's one, you can go shopping. Get what you need. Get the stuff. Get something fun. It's, it's, it's great. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you have an altar to shopping in your soul, you need to attend to that altar. That altar needs to be serviced. So you end up going into places that you have no business. You come out, you've maxed out your credit card, you spend all your cash, you've got bags and bags of stuff, and you get it home and you probably don't even wear half of it ever. Wow. It doesn't fit right, whatever. But your soul just had to have it when you saw that you go, oh, oh, I gotta have that, I gotta have that. You get it home, you try it on, you go, oh, this looks like a clown suit. It's because it never looked good to begin with. Your wow. soul needed it because there was an altar in your soul that needed to be serviced. And these altars, you find out that every altar have you have a repetitive activity. The, you know, when when a human attendant used to serve the altars to, to demon gods in the Old oh, Testament, come on, back and back, serve it this day, then serve it again the next day, then bring another offering the next day, and bring another offering the next day. If you are in some sort of a repetitive pattern that you can't stop, that you're always going back to the shopping, you're always going online to shop, you're you're always uh, watching that certain program. You're always doing that certain wow. thing that you know is not Deliver good. Deliver me tonight, you Lord. Are, yeah, you're serving that altar with that repetitive activity. Some of you right now should chat in because you know what I'm talking about. You have repetitive behaviors that you've never been able to break. A lot of times, Isaiah, when people are addicted to, to drugs, alcohol, whatever, it's because there's an altar in their soul. Wow. They establish that altar by sinning with the alcohol and the drugs or whatever. And then that altar got so established in the ear, in their heart, in their thinking, in their emotions, that they have to keep on going back and serving that altar to serve that demon that's on that altar. But it's in the soul realm. We gotta get healed in two places, in our soul. Cause it's our soul that lusts after idols. It's our soul that wants the idols. It's our soul that needs the idols. It's our soul that needs that comfort that the idols bring, the comfort that the food brings, the comfort that the shopping brings, the comfort that having those possessions bring. It's our soul. We need to get our soul healed. But we also need to take these idols to court. Come I can on. remember getting, you know, working on my soul for years and go, and I had a lot of success with breaking off the idols, but they were still there and they were always writing. They were always 
speaking loudly, trying to drive me to them, making me think about, I need this, I need that, I want this, I want that. I'd feel better if I had this. I'd, be, I'd look better if I had that. There was it's like this noise all the time in my mind and my emotions. And I finally said, God, what is this? And he says, the idols are rioting. And that's why we named wow. the book Idols Riot. And I was like, okay, idols are rioting. What does that mean? So I went to the second source after, after Holy Spirit, and that's Google. So I Googled idols rioting. And it came up a story in Acts 19 where this guy, Demetrius, he makes the silver shrines of the goddess Artemis and sells them to people. Wow. And he says in that scripture, he goes, we make no small income from this trade and we derive our wealth from this trade. So of course, because we're all spending so much money on our idols. Wow. And he was making a bunch of money from suckers like us who spend all of our money on our electronics or our football or our entertainment or our or subscriptions to Netflix or whatever else it is. And Paul was in town preaching the gospel. Demetrius got angry because Paul was saying idols were not, were not good and people needed to stop worshiping them. He gathered all of his fellow tradesmen together and said, this guy Paul is gonna steal all our wealth and all of our money by telling people the truth. So they started a riot. Wow. And it says that they went out into the city and they got everybody so worked up. The, it says the entire city went as one man into the amphitheater that was built to worship Artemis of the Ephesians, the demonic goddess, Diana of the Ephesians. And they went as one man in there with one voice and said, shouting for two hours, great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Now, you can't cr get Christians to yell for 30 seconds. Come that on Jesus now. Came. Right. So... They're yelling this for two hours. Why? Why were they yelling with one voice in total agreement for two hours? They were being controlled and driven by the goddess that they worshipped. Wow. And it said a bunch of people tried to stop the riot. This guy that was a Jewish man tried to stop it. They booed him off the stage. Paul said he wanted to stop it. They said, you better not. They'll go up. If you go up there, they'll kill you. And then finally, a city clerk from the city court came and said, Demetrius, fellow tradesmen, if you have a beef against Paul, the courts are open, proconsuls are available, bring charges against one another legally, and then the riot stopped. That's when I knew that we have to get healed in here. Wow. Because that's our first landing strip, but we also have to do our healing in the courts of heaven. Because mm. that's the only way to stop these beasts from rioting, speaking nonstop into your mind, trying to drive you towards your idols, drive you to eat, drive you to spend money, drive you to, to spend time on these different idols in your life. We've got to do both the soul healing and the courts. So, so good. Guys, I'm telling you tonight, 3,500 of you guys in the chat that are about to get healed, about to get delivered, and about to get breakthrough. I'm going to have Katie, as we um, go to our portion of prayer here before we close out, have her pray for you guys. And we're going to decree, we're going to declare, we are going to smash idols tonight. We're going to shatter idols. Now, here's the thing. I already know, I could already hear all of the religious people on YouTube that are going to make videos about this video and say, oh, everything's an idol. Everything's a demon. Friend, you got to understand, everything can be an idol. Again, remember, when they made the idol in Exodus 32, it was, I believe, you talked about earlier the idol that they made the golden calf was made out of golden earrings why because number one they were valuable and the most th valuable thing to you is your idol number two earrings are not wrong golden earrings there's nothing wrong with them they actually got those earrings from egypt and god allowed them to wear them what's wrong with it was when you make the golden earring which is innocent into an idol is football innocent yes but it's not innocent when you turn the football into the idol. Remember, the golden earring's okay, but the golden earring became the golden calf, which was the idol. So, for all you religious people in the chat, number one, you're still gonna stay bound after this, so we're not really worried about you. All of you that are hungry, that are like, I want freedom, I wanna break the idol, it could be anything. And we've really made an idol out of everything. Again, it might not be an idol for you, it might be an idol for me. It might not be an idol for me, it might be an idol for you. But I'll tell you right now, as you were talking, Katie, 
anxiety about this going back and having to attend to your idol, attend to the altar. I know there's stuff in my life that I'm saying, Lord, I need to get rid of this. Lord, I need to stop doing this. Scrolling, yeah. looking at my YouTube studio. Up. Oh, look, another hundred scars. Oh, look, let me check my analytics. I'm obsessed with my YouTube analytics. I'm up there. Oh, this video. The, I got to get off that. It's an idol because I'm, I'm constantly going to it for no reason just to escape and get stress relieved. So that might sound stupid to some of you, but to me, God is highlighting, I need to break this tonight in Jesus' name. So Katie's going to pray, guys. It's not going to be, it doesn't have to be this huge complicated thing. You need to address it tonight. You need to confront your idol tonight, and then you need to break it in Jesus' name. Katie's going to lead us in prayer, and we're just going to break these things tonight. Thank you, Listen, Lord. guys, it's true what Isaiah just said. I love that example about the earring. The earring's not the idol, but it became an idol when they put it in the pile to form the golden calf. Look, you can tell. If something in your life has become an idol because you are spending a lot of time thinking about it, okay, you spend a lot of attention and energy trying to get it, you spend your money on it excessively, it's okay to buy stuff, but are you know, you know, you know when you've crossed the line, okay? What have you done to cross the line with your spending and, and, and what's possessing your thoughts? What, what, are you, what are you putting a lot of energy into? In fact, chat it in as the Holy Spirit reveals it to you now. And we're going to go through the steps. I'm going to take us into the courts of heaven right now. Because remember, idolatry is the number one commandment. Okay, Thou shalt have for themselves no other gods before me. And number two, make for thyself no graven image. So those are the first two commandments. The devil is a legalist. He always accuses you of breaking the law, breaking the law. So you can bet that he is constantly in the courts of heaven doing what? The number one and number two thing he accuses you of is having gods before God and making for yourself graven images. He's accusing you of idolatry. And that, and whoever doesn't show up for court loses. I know. <laughs> Ex-felon, okay? I wouldn't show up for court and they would send the federal marshals after me to arrest me. And I would lose my case. You've got to go to court. If you don't, whoever doesn't go loses. So we're going to go into that court today. And you're going to face the accusations that the enemy is bringing against you that have allowed you to have ear problems, eye issues, speech impediments, problems with your physical body, problems with your gift, food addictions, all those types of things, gross, cancers, everything that these idols are causing in your life. So let's just start thanking the Lord as we start going in. Father, we thank you. We just give you the praise and the honor right now. In the name of Jesus, we worship you. We lift you up right now and we magnify your name. We thank you, Lord. You're going to get everyone on this be tonight healed and free of these idols, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we praise you for your power. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the Holy One. You are the God of glory. You are the mighty Lord. We thank you, Lord, right now. We worship you as we go into the court right now. In the name of Jesus, to face these accusations and to have victory through the blood of Jesus right now. Okay, so I'm going to take us in and then you guys are going to pray after me. And we're going to get a breakthrough, freedom, and deliverance right now. So, Father, as a officer of the court, I take everyone that's watching this broadcast right now in with me to the court of grace. It, sa it says that we are able to come boldly before the throne of grace to receive grace and mercy in our time of need. We have a time of need, Lord, right now. We're being accused of idolatry, and we've come to face these charges in the name of Jesus. Now, I want everyone to pray after me to say, Lord God, in Jesus' name, I step into this court to face the accusations of idolatry that are in my life and my bloodline. Lord God, I have idols in my life, and I step before this court to receive grace and mercy for my sin. Lord God, 
I repent of all idolatry. Lord, the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, that if I confess my sins, you are faithful to forgive and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Now, guys, right there, if you look at that scripture in the Amplified, it says, and dismiss my lawlessness. So say this with me. So say, and because I'm confessing my sins of idolatry, all of my lawlessness of breaking the first and second commandment will be dismissed by the blood of Jesus. Say, I thank you, Lord, that Colossians 2 says the handwritten requirements that were against me were nailed to your cross. And through it, you made a public spectacle of the enemy on my behalf. Lord God, I ask that those handwritten requirements, the accusations of the devil, of my idolatry, would be cleansed by your precious blood. In the name of Jesus now. And I thank you, Lord, that you're going to wipe out all the record of idolatry in my life and my bloodline through your work on the cross because I'm repenting now before you. Now stay right there, everybody. Now look, remember, we said the soul, right? The soul. The soul's what lusts after these idols. The soul's what hungers after them. The soul's what desires them. We think about them. Our mind, will, and emotions are in the soul. We think about them. We make choices to go after them. Our emotions are connected to them. In that 1 John 1, 9 scripture, it says that when we confess our sins, God's faithful to forgive and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. I want you to put your hand on your head and your heart. And we're going to pray for the Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus, the dunamis power to cleanse our soul from the control that these idols have, the thoughts that are in our mind, how they control our decisions and our emotions. So pray with me right now. Say, Lord God, these demonic spirits are controlling my soul. They're constantly bombarding my mind with thoughts about them to drive me to spend my time, my energy, my money, my thought life directed towards these idols. Cleanse my mind with your blood from all dead works and release your Holy Spirit into my mind to heal every altar that's been erected to demon gods in my mind. Lord, my will is being controlled by these demonic spirits. Cleanse my will. Free me from their control. Wash me in the blood. The blood, it says the blood is put on the altar to atone for my soul. That's Leviticus 1711. Leviticus 1711. To cleanse the altar of my soul with your blood and release your Holy Spirit, dunamis power, to heal my will, to free it. So I'm only controlled by the Holy Spirit. And Lord God, fill my emotions with your blood. Cleanse my appetites. Cleanse me of lust. Cleanse me of the desire I have for idols. 
with your precious blood. Release your Holy Spirit into my emotions to heal my emotions of the control that these idols have in the name of Jesus. Now stay right there, everybody. Just kind of put your hands up and pray. I'm going to pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I release the Holy Spirit to heal them also of all the trauma that they've been through. If they've been through a trauma that's wounded them, that has made them seek out comfort in these idols, Lord, I ask that the Holy Spirit penetrate their soul right now. Penetrate their mind, will, and emotions. Go and find those altars that have been dedicated to trauma, that have caused them to desire these idols. In the name of Jesus, right now, right now, right now, right now. I decree they are excellent of soul. In the name of Jesus, right now. Even say that with me right now, guys, to say, I decree all trauma that has driven me to find comfort in idols, all exhaustion, all weariness, all depression, all anxiety, all things that are in my soul that would drive me to seek satisfaction through idols, be healed now by the Holy Spirit and dunamis power. Now just start thanking the Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We worship you right now. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we give you the honor and the glory right now. In the name of Jesus, right now. Right now, right now, right now. In Jesus' name, right now. Right now, right now. <clears throat> right now. Now look, guys, as you've been repenting, I want you to now decree you're under grace. Some people think, oh, grace, when you're under grace, you don't need to repent. And then other people think, well, you, you just need to repent and you never need grace. You need both. The Bible says in, in Mark, I think it's 5, 16, it says that blessed are those who mourn over their sins and repent. They will receive grace and they will be freed as the pain in their soul lifts. So it talks about how when we repent, more grace is released. Why is that important? Because the Bible says no one can keep the whole law. It's impossible. And that's why it says where sin abounds, increases and abounds, grace abounds even more. Okay, so we need grace. So just say this with me. Just say, Lord God, I can never keep the law perfectly. I want to. And when I fail, I'll repent. But when I, but when I, I can't, when I can't walk perfectly, that's why you gave me free grace. I receive that free grace now. I'm under grace, not the law. Where my sin increased and abound, grace increased even more. I receive it right now. The blood of Jesus, the free grace of God, and the Holy Spirit. Healing me of these idols right now in the name of Jesus. Can I put up your hands? I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to every idolatrous spirit that's on them, that's driving them to eat, that's blocking their ears and causing deafness, dumbness, blindness, that's blocking their eyes and causing issues with their eyes, that's afflicting their bodies and causing pain and disorder of any kind. Right now, I speak to those spirits, and I say, every demonic idolatrous spirit, you come in the name of Jesus, you come in the name of Jesus, I command that you spirits let go. These people opened a case in court. Now they've confessed. They've repented. They're under the blood. They're under grace. You have to let go of them. I command all trauma to break right now. Break. Break. Break right now in the name of Jesus. And I command that your bones would line up. That your eyes would open, that floaters would dissolve, that buzzing would stop in your ears, that deaf ears would open right now, that your gifts would explode. I break food idolatry right now, right now, right now, right now. Say, I confess. Come on, pray with me. Say, I confess that I've been eating food that is overeating, junk food, eating too fast, 
eating when I'm not hungry. Now, Father, heal me. I break my fellowship and partnership with these demonic spirits that came from me eating at their feasts. In the name of Jesus now. Now, Father, you go. I command that spirit to let them go. I judge that demonic spirit in the name of Jesus right now. I judge those spirits, those deaf and dumb spirits. You come out. Come out. Blind spirits, you come out. Crippling spirits, you come out of the knees. You come out of the legs. You come out of the body. You come out of the spine. You come out of the neck right now. Right now in Jesus' name, I command pain to go. Pain, go. Pain, go. Pain, go. Pain, go. Spirit of infirmity, come out. Come out. Come out. Come out, come out, fire of God, 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 fire of God. And I speak creative miracles into the eyes, the ears, the body right now, in the name of Jesus right now. And I speak soul healing, healing into the soul right now, in the name of Jesus right now, right now, right now, right now, right now right now and i judge those demonic spirits in the court of heaven right now in the name of jesus 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 the court judge you right now the court judge you right now by the blood of jesus by the testimony of jesus by the testimony right now by the blood of the lamb in our testimony the court judge you right now and drive you out in the name of jesus now, 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 it's open ears open, body be healed now, bones be healed now, bones be healed now, now, in the name of Jesus, now. Now, if you have to forgive anyone, you need to do it right now. You need to do it right now. Because that's idolatry too. When you start holding on to unforgiveness, you're idolizing your own opinion. You're idolizing your own belief system. You judge somebody. You need to let it go. You need to forgive them and you need to repent. Do it right now so that you can be healed. And I need to start, have people start chatting in. Did you yawn? Did you feel heat? Did you feel cold? Is the pain gone in your body? I command bones to move into place. I command knees to be healed right now in the name of Jesus. I command spines. I command all the discs to be re restored in the spine right now. I command the back and the neck to be aligned in the name of Jesus. I've seen hundreds of spines move into place. I command that the spine would begin to move. I command that that spirit of infirmity would come off. I command that your soul would be healed. I command that you would see your legs growing out, that you would have no more pain in your joints. Right now, in the name of Jesus, now, now, now. Come and I on. want you to start chatting in. What are you getting right now? People said coughing, yawning. I felt delivered. Something came out of me. My ear popped. My jaw popped. I just yawned. I started yawning, gagging, floaters. My floaters are gone. Come on, praise the Lord. Knee pain is gone. Um, hard yawning, tearing up, feeling heat in my shoulders, healing in my back. I'm just reading these quick thousands of comments coming in here. Coughing, coughing, yawning, throwing up, delivered. I felt something pop. My mind felt like it has a system reboot. Come on, somebody. Yawning a lot, tears, lots of tears. Guys, tears are also a sign of healing. Spine, I felt my spine realign. My stomach is healed. Stomach aches, burping, yawning. Man, they're coming in too quick. I can't even load these. Yawning. Uh, lots of people saying they're vomiting, getting delivered. Something came off the top of my head. Sinus pressure is gone. Back pain is gone. My neck doesn't hurt as much as it did before. Crying. I felt squirming and then my back popped. Vibrating. Lots of yawning, yawning. No more pain. Crying. No more pain. No more pain. Shaking. No more pain. Heat in my face. Burning in my belly. I feel the fire of God. My ear infection has cleared up. Come on, chills all over, yawning the whole time. Man, these are coming in too quick here. Felt the pain go away, felt the pain gone. Nose is running. Lots of people saying they're throwing up, coughing, shaking, crying, delivered. Feeling the presence of God, chills all over. Headache is gone, sinus pressure gone. Floaters are gone. Come on, ears opening. I feel lighter, chills, weight has been lifted off of me. Man, literally thousands of comments are coming in right now. Yawning, crying, the power of God is touching people, tingling on my fingertips, nerve damage, nerve pain, gone. Come on, no more pain in my left ear. Lots of tears, I feel lighter. Some tears, I got chills all over. 
feeling feeling lighter feeling delivered come on praise the lord god is doing it tonight guys i feel like i'm getting deliverance tonight praise the lord i'm getting breakthrough tonight i repeated everything that she prayed i was also repeating it guys and i feel the power of god breaking right now blood flow restored in my arm come on praise the lord someone said i feel happy again praise the lord thank you lord miracles are happening 3,700 people on here right now. God is doing mass deliverance, mass miracles, guys. Keep believing God for your breakthrough. Keep believing God for deliverance. Some of you, I really believe, that say you're not feeling something, you're gonna feel something. You're gonna walk this out. Jesus said, as you walk, you will be healed. So I believe as some of you go to bed tonight, some of you wake up, there's gonna be a progressive healing that happens. And for many of you, you got an instantaneous miracle tonight. So continue to send those in. They're, they're actually just coming in so fast that it's just freezing my screen here because so many people are typing in. Thank you, Lord. All glory to God. Someone said, I saw idols leaving. Praise the Lord. Come on. Idols are breaking tonight in Jesus' name. There's, while yeah, there's 30. Wanna, Go I ahead. I want to decree supernatural weight loss. Come on. <clears throat> when I prayed this prayer um, just not too long ago, I had a woman come back to me and said she lost eight pounds. When she woke up in the morning, her husband said, you look thinner. She got on the scale. She'd lost eight pounds and she lost another 20 over the next two weeks. This happens come all on, the time. Lord. It's normal. Father, in Jesus' name, I decree supernatural weight loss for people, that they'll have control, self-control over their food, that they'll recognize when a demon is speaking to them and trying to drive them to eat, and they'll reject that voice, and they won't they won't acquiesce and come into agreement with it. And Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, I decree even more miracles happening. I saw, like, somebody said that I got healed of my allergies. There's been a lot of people said the pain in my knee is gone. My knees are healed. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. People are still chatting in. It's It's awesome. Thank you, Lord. Katie, I want to say too, while there's 3,700 people still on here, when's your next broadcast? I know I put your um, YouTube down below. I want to make sure that all of you guys follow, you subscribe, you get linked in. The best way that you can help us out is by getting linked into our platform. So get linked into her Facebook, get linked into her YouTube, because the more of you guys that get in her broadcast, the more of you guys that are engaging in her content, the algorithm will promote it to more people. So I want to make sure everyone that's on here, before you guys get off, we're not done yet. I want to make sure that you guys subscribe to her YouTube channel she's posting there a lot get on her Facebook she has a lot of encouraging content a lot of this stuff make sure you guys get the book but Katie where else is there anything else you wanted to point them to any events you got coming up that you wanted to talk about yeah you know somebody just chatted in that their leg tumor is gone come on come on thank you Lord thank you, thank Lord. you Lord um yeah you know what I'm doing a live broadcast with um Robert Henderson this this um Wednesday and then I'm going to Waco to be with Robert and his wife for um, the whole weekend, so go there. Where else are we gonna be? Uh, you'll you'll be back in Texas for the Olympics. I'll be back in Texas after that. Go on my website to get the address for that. I'm also gonna be in Atlanta for the Kings Conference Come on. on October 31st, and I'm gonna be in Boston. So get to these I'm events. Going, yay! And get I'm going to, to California events. too. So Come go on. to my website and and. Come and see me so we can get more deliverance, more come healing going on. on in here. Yes, guys, come to these events. We've been having, Katie, two to 3,000 people come to every single event. And I, I, I need you guys get to these events, bring that fire, bring that hunger, and then come to Katie and say, I saw you on the broadcast, on the Revival Lifestyle broadcast, so that she'll keep coming back on. So, guys, what an incredible night. Katie, I know we've already been on here for almost two hours. I appreciate you. I value your time. You've poured out. I know some speakers, well, none that I have on, but some people are like, I, I only want to go 20 minutes. You've been on here for two hours with us pouring into us. I love you. I appreciate you. I honor you. I'm going to be sending you not only a love offering, but something on top of that because I want to sow in your ministry because I was so tremendously blessed tonight. So thank you so much for being on the broadcast tonight. Absolutely. Hey, I love you guys. I love all you young millennials. And Isaiah, you are leading the pack. Mm. You are leading the pack of a new generation of men and women that are bringing real to people not just going on youtube just to talk but actually you're getting stuff done and i honor you for that it's awesome amen thank you so much katie and thank you for being on i'm gonna uh, i'll contact you guys tonight because i want to make sure i sent you something right away and honor you we appreciate you and love you thanks so much for being on and i'm gonna ask you in front of the uh, 3700 people that are on here will you come back on in the future if we invite you back on again you ask me and I'll come anytime. There, there we go. All right. You guys stuff, see, so. you guys see, you heard it here. Listen, guys, she's broadcasting. She's recording shows. She's doing stuff every day and she's taking the time to be on here. So we honor you. And you just said in front of 3,700 people, you'll be back. So we'll definitely invite you back. Thank you, Katie. We'll talk to you okay. soon. Thanks so much. God bless. All right. Bye-bye. God bless. 
Awesome broadcast. Guys, wow. Wow. Can we get some wows in the chat? Guys, I'm telling you right now, listen, I'm so moved tonight. I'm I'm donating into my own stream tonight, okay? I'm going to give into my own stream, and I'm going to send something, Katie, from myself, not even from y'all, and then I'm also going to send her finances from you guys so please if you could afford to give do not dine in dash tonight so something because i want to send her something extra special she just poured into us we've been live for an hour and 40 minutes we me and her were together 20 minutes before that so she's been with us for two hours she's very busy i honor her she has the fire of god she has the power of god she's just an awesome awesome woman of god and so guys honor her tonight so something if you can't afford to give don't feel obligated please but those of you that can don't dine in dash if everyone gives something guys we'll have 3700 of you and we'll have 30 people give so we literally will have like one percent of the people watching give so don't be a part of the 99 percent that are just going to jump off here even if it's a dollar so something because i am not only going to sew into her myself i'm going to take some of these finances that come into the stream to the ministry and i'm going to send them to her as well so more than you give i'll be sending her tonight i'm going to give her uh, just extra tonight because i feel it's the right thing to do i want to honor her awesome awesome thank you for reminding me of the music Thank you guys. Uh, the ways you can give IsaiahSaldivar.com slash partner. It's right there on screen. It's also linked in the comments and the description. So I'm making it easy for you guys. Venmo is at Isaiah Saldivar. If you want to go Venmo, make sure you put the at sign. And then PayPal is on the comments plus link there on screen. PayPal.me slash Isaiah Saldivar. Please do not comment saying, I'm sorry, it's not enough. I'm sorry, I'm only giving a little bit. Do not oppose excuse me, do not apologize, okay? If it's only a dollar, it doesn't matter. Don't apologize for giving too little. Nothing's too little. It's not about the amount. It's about the thought that goes behind it, and it's about the principle of it, of sowing a seed regardless. So please don't say it's not a lot. It is a lot. Even a dollar is a lot, okay? So please don't feel bad if you don't have, and if you don't have finances, don't feel bad. Other people are going to give tonight to be able to keep us going to do this for free and to be able to honor our guests because we do so significantly into our guests and when i say significant i'm talking about like double what they would get if they went and preached at a church we double honor them in our broadcast okay we don't give them a little bit we double honor them we sow into them because it's a biblical principle and i'm not going to get up here and preach about giving and not give myself so again i'm going to honor them thank you to everyone sowing giving can we get some wows in the chat tonight i'll be honest guys we're on episode 80 I could honestly say this is one of my top favorite episodes. I don't know about you guys, but this was one of my top favorite episodes. Love having Katie on. She's so anointed, so humble, and just the flow is so awesome. So I just love having her on. Appreciate her. She was amazing, right? Come on, guys. Was it worth staying up? And we had great numbers, 3,700. That's incredible. And I'm humbled by it. I don't take it for granted. I don't take it lightly. It's a big deal to me. So I want you guys to know I'm not just like, oh, no big deal, 3,000 people. It's a big deal to me. I really do appreciate it. And right when I get off this broadcast, I will throw all the crowns before the feet of Jesus. I will honor God. Thank God. He gets all the praise, all the glory, all the credit for that. All right, guys, let's start reading the donations tonight as you guys give. Thank you all of you giving. We don't do 30 minute uh, messages on giving. If you want to give, you can. The links are there. We appreciate you guys. I do ask at, um, like longer when we have guests because I want to bless my guests. On Monday night, I go on for like two minutes. If you want to give, you can. But on the broadcast, on the podcast, I always want to challenge you guys because the finances are going to our guests, a lot of them. So that's why I extra ask you guys because I want to make sure that we bless them and, and honor them. And I'm going to honor them regardless whether you guys give or not. I'm still going to honor them because it's the right thing to do. And I know what it's like to travel and preach and have my income come from traveling and preaching. So anonymous said let's go revival time thank you anonymous rodriguez said i'm not working right now if i was I would, I would give more thank you for your work thank you rodriguez anonymous said i'm starting my own bible study going to teach people how to cast out demons thanks for teaching me i now go on the streets and pray for people and cast out demons come on anonymous praise the lord Lori lewis thank you so much she's a keep speaking truth and following the spirit may yahweh bless you louise adams thank you alicia ponce i got your prayer request there if you guys have a prayer request i will not read it out loud unless you ask me to so thank you maria matos so thank you for your preaching. My mom and daughter are COVID positive. Please pray for them. I got you, Maria. As I said, I won't mention that. I just mentioned that. But you know what? Uh, I accidentally just mentioned your prayer request. I'm sure you won't mind there, but usually I won't read those out loud. Jalisa Sanchez said fire. T-Dog said I am. I am that I am. Thank you, T-Dog. Thank you, Crystal. Patrice Brown. Thank you, Linda Linville. Thank you for always sewing. We love you, Linda. Said thank you so much. Thank you, God. Thank you, Linda. Kelsey Pillsbury. Thank you. Jaylani. Thank you. Raid Saul. Um, Boom. I almost said it wrong. I got you, bro. 
says such a fire stream tonight. God bless you and Katie. Thank you for being a legend. I love you, brother. You're a legend, right? Thank you. Teresa, thank you. Anonymous said, Isaiah, that was amazing. I feel so blessed. Thank you, Jesus, for Isaiah and Katie. Thank you, Anonymous. Kenya Woods, thank you. Jeff McKenzie, so keep spreading the fire. Thank you for faithful and obedient. God bless you. Thank you, Jeff. Anonymous said, really need this tonight. So grateful for the Lord and these servants. Thank you, Lauren V. Kayota, thank you. Uh, Kai said, thank you for, for healing. God bless you and your family helping me stay strong. Thank you, Kai. Stephanie Lee, thank you. Vonda Acosta said, praise God. Donna said, thanks so much for building a strong army. Tiana Gums said, uh, God through this ministry has blessed me more than you know. Thank you, Tiana. Anonymous said, thanks for your obedience. Dondra Cheryl said, thank you, Jesus. Justin Sprawled, Sprawdling said, seed for Katie. Thank you, Justin. K. Raphael said, thank you for the ministry. God bless you. And An um, Ansa, Anisa, Anisa said, your ministries are a blessing. Thank you, Isaiah and Katie. Cody, thank you. Rico said, great teaching. God bless you and Katie. I received a lot of revelation tonight. Um, Sue, thank you so much. Elimelech said, love Katie so much. Thank you both. Anonymous said, awesome. Thank you. B. Blair said, delivered from idols. Thank you. Jennifer Molina, thank you. Rosa Rogers, Kimra, Josepha Vidal said, extreme neck pain healing. Audrey, um, Giselle McCormick, thank you. Tanya Williams said, for Katie, Isaiah, I got you this month in the partnership. Thanks so much. I'll make sure Katie get that, gets that, Tanya. Thank you. April, thank you. Yesenia, thank you. Corey P., thank you. Um, Giniessa, thank you. Said, I love your ministry and praise God for what he's doing. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I'll check the message. Um, Giniessa, thank you. Tracy Gardner said, blessed by this live stream, sewing into the work of the ministry. Thank you so much, Tracy. Ricardo um, Colin, thank you. Svetlana, thank you so much. I can't believe I pronounced that right, but I did. Anonymous said, thanks for the works of Jesus Christ you do. LED said, God bless my brother. Jason Mann, Hadavia, thank you so much. Thanks for the eye-opening stream. Albert Yanez said, thank you both for the powerful message. Victoria, thank you. Melissa L, thank you. Man, you guys are just so generous tonight. Anthony Mail, thank you. Said, love the content tonight. It was fire. Also, can we get purple lights? I got you. I got you. Hold on. There you go. Actually, you know what? I got you because I'm feeling generous tonight. I'm going to give you two purple lights. There you go. That looks good with the two in the blue. Man, that's kind of making me want a popsicle. Rich Medina, Medea. Uh, media man what is going on here say god bless you brother what an inspiring night thank you rich lewis thank you crystal yvette said wow um shawam said powerful a lot of anonymous givers thank you all the anonymous givers frank villagrana thank you jimmy said when will you do another collab with john ramirez katie was great soon jimmy ania thank you micah buster so thank you, Isaiah. I can't tell you how much your channels bless me. Bethany, thank you. Mark, thank you. Steve Marlowe. So wow, your teachings are always solid. Rose Casaba, thank you. Isaac Matteo, thank you. Joanne Perales, so thank you, Katie, for the powerful teaching. The, 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 these things need to be taught to every Christian in the church. Hallelujah. I'm free from idol worship. When is the last time you heard a sermon in church on idols? Come on. This was good tonight. Good stuff tonight. Lily Perez, thank you. Um, Onkless, thank you so much. To praise God's word. Priscilla Pinto, thank you. Christina B. So keep bringing the fire. Shaquilla, thank you. Angel Sanchez, thank you. Marcos Chavez, thank you. Courtney, um, Paul, I can't say your last name, but thank you, Courtney. said, thanks so much, Isaiah and Katie. I'm brand new in Christ. Please pray. I got your prayer request there. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Courtney. Um, the name's O. In my name are pronounced as the O's in like on or opera. Good morning, Mr. Isaiah. I really feel blessed by your ministry and thank God for all he's done doing through you. Katie's message was essential. Thank you. Thank you, um, O. Appreciate you. Angela, thank you. Freddie and Priscilla, thank you for always sewing. We love you, Freddie and Priscilla. So the podcast was absolute fire. We were truly blessed tonight. Please continue to bring Katie back in these live streams. We needed to hear this big time. Um, the prayer at the end was surgical. Be blessed with this offering. Freddie and Priscilla, I couldn't put it better than that. Thank you. Brianna McKay, it's my first time giving online. I only caught the last 30 minutes, but it was awesome. Thank you. Brianna, you can go rewatch it. Thank you, Brianna McKay, for your first time giving. We appreciate you. Emilio, thank you. Will, so one of the best of all time. Thanks for holding us accountable and shattering the idols that get between us. Michelle Velez, thank you, said for Katie, I got you. Um, Yolanda, said I don't know where a lot of us would be if it wasn't for this ministry. Thank you, no more idols. Thank you, Yolanda. Thank you, Anonymous. Wow, guys, so generous tonight. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for responding to this. And again, I'm going to make sure that um, Katie gets a very generous offering tonight because she deserves it and I want to sow into her ministry. It's the right thing to do. All right, guys, here we go with the Venmo. Ah, my jaw. Let me stretch my jaw as it pops here from all this reading let's see the i'm sure the venmo is going to be going to be going going tonight here man this water is so good man i must be dehydrated you guys know when you're like dehydrated and water is just the best thing ever man amazing the only thing that i didn't repeat after katie was when she said um supernatural weight loss i was praying for supernatural weight gain all right 
Let's see here. Hannah Miller said, outstanding work. I look forward to the day I can give more. Thank you, Hannah. Yesenia Fernandez said, tonight was fire. Katie was fire. Thank you for today. What version of the Bible do you read on Monday nights for the book of Revelation? We read the New King James on Monday nights. Thank you, Yesenia. Nina, thank you so much said, for the podcast. Is, um, Isabella said, I missed the live, but I'm rewatching right now. Thank you. Awesome. God bless. Thank you, Isabella. Pier, um, Pierrette. So thank you for answering the call of God. Blessing upon your family. Thank you, Pierriette. Jamie, thank you. Alexandra Rojas, thank you. Marielle Torres, say God bless you. I'm thankful for your ministry. Thank you. Yulia said for Katie, thank you. Marcella said Katie Sousa C. Thank you, Marcella. We love and appreciate you and Ellen. Excuse me, guys. The water is, there it goes, going down. Amy Hooser said fire with Katie. Thank you so much. Lee Rodriguez said thank you so much. Pastor Isaiah only caught the end of the broadcast, but it was amazing. Nate Nat G, thank you. Morgan Jameson, thank you so much. Michelle Garcia, thank you. Natalie Jackson, thank you. Crystal Williams, thank you so much. Lloyd Mendez, it's an amazing stream. I'm truly blessed. Thank you. Zachary, thank you. Lauren Sutherland, thank you so much. Priscilla Davis, thank you. Um, Sus Susanna Pierre, thank you so much. I was healed from floaters tonight. Praise the Lord. Carla Garcia said, wow, tonight was amazing. Thank you. Nicole Norton said, thanks. Uh, prayers for my family. I got you. Rebecca Said powerful message tonight, loved it. Gabrielle Ramirez said for Katie. John Stafford said, wow, 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 needed this so much, bless you. Michelle Mercado said great live and great word. Thank you both for the revelation. Ariel said for Katie. Christy, thank you. Amani said fire word tonight. Thank you, Amani. Thank you, Brooke. Uh, Sue, thank you. Rachel Anderson, thank you so much. I got your thing there, appreciate you. Emily Bolts, thank you. Chelsea Thompson said, God bless you both. Thank you for such a great message. Tessa Barrow said, thank you for Isaiah families, Isaiah Seldov, our family anointing. Anna, thank you, Heather. Said, thank you, Isaiah and Katie Fire. Tonight, my 10-year-old and I were delivered of our food idols. Thank you, Heather. Kathy Barnett, thank you. Said, destroying idols. Kimberly, Nick, I mean, Rick, thank you. Chill True said, this was so key for the body of Christ. Thank you for bringing Katie on. A renewed revelation. Nestor Palacios said, this this for Katie's ministry. Thank you for having on the broadcast. Pastor Isaiah, we're blessed and delivered tonight. Awesome. Derek Martinez. Um, said my wife got more deliver, um, had more deliverance tonight. She felt something burning in her shoulder, and then she felt big relief. I'm so glad Katie was on tonight so much. God bless you. Thank you, John P. Thank you, Lydia Landrum. Said praise God I was healed from food addiction, idols, and back pain, and generational curses broken. Thank you, Lydia. Irma said awesome. Evelyn De Jesus said thank you. Christina Hermes said thank you. Don, Katie Susan, your awesomeness. Thank you, Lord. Mar uh, Marcella Gonzalez, thank you. John McAllister said Katie Souza, my neck doesn't hurt. Come on, John. Man, so much healing tonight, guys. Selena, thank you. Sarah Albertson said, blessings. Thank you for tonight. Joriel, thank you. Yolanda. Heather Esperson, thank you so much. Luciella Dolly, thank you so much. So thanks for the message tonight. Straight from the front lines of Boston. Alicia Pin, uh, Pineda, Pineda, thank you so much. So thanks for the word. Eye-opening. Donna Rojas, thank you. So thanks so much for your fire of God. Keep it up. Appreciate you. Bianca Bar Arbaca, thank you. Psalm Brew, so your channel's blessed me beyond words. I'm the first year in college. Thank you for spitting the fire of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Psalm. Fun Buns, thank you so much. Tina Dugan, thank you. Said, just bought Katie's book. Such an awesome teaching. Rocco Cipriano, said, loved it, missed it. Um, I got your request there. Chasta Jennings, said, got extremely blessed tonight. Can't stop crying. I have good fruit in my life. Struggle to be free from whatever's kept me. Thank you for being a vessel. I speak blessing even more. Praise the Lord. All right, guys, let me read these last venue of them and hang out the chat here. A lot more just came in through Venmo, I think, right? Or no, did I already read these? No, I haven't. Wow. Miss P, thank you. Appreciate you. Check the deliverance map for deliverance, Miss P. The Davis, Don, Jade, and Jackie Davis. We love you guys. Said it was such a blessing. May God bless you and your ministries. Anonymous, so thank you so much for pouring into life. Um, Lariah uh, Fields. So my mom's birthday is tomorrow. Can you wish her happy birthday? Happy birthday to Lariah Fields' mom. Happy birthday. I don't have your name here, but happy birthday to you. Um, I got your thing there, so don't read on stream. Joseph Vicente, thank you. Jeannie, thank you. Janine, thank you. Elizabeth, thank you so much. Brandy, Ross. So I didn't hear the message, but this was left. Um, cannot wait to receive the message once it's uploaded. Yes, Brandy, you can scroll back on YouTube right now and watch it. Joseph Vicente, thank you. Yvonne, thank you. Linda Pleffer, thank you. Liam Thompson, said, thanks so much, Isaiah and Katie. I've been truly blessed by this. Much needed. Thank you, Liam. David, thank you. Animosity, said, the word of God, power of God, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Okay, guys, wow. Wow, that was a lot. Thank you, guys. Again, I'm going to send something, Katie. I'm going to send Katie something extra tonight because I just feel led to do it. Praise the Lord. Thank you guys for sewing. We appreciate you guys. And they're putting the thing there. All right, guys, I'm going to hang out the chat here for a bit. I know we're almost at two hours, so I'll hang out for a bit before I get off. Lots of people still sending in their their um their testimonies there. Awesome. Awesome. God is good. People saying wow, hearing loss. 
Dr. Nundy, thank you so much and thanks for your obedience. All right, guys, whatever you want to say to me, whatever you want to chat, go ahead now. I'm reading the chat all right here. Praise the Lord. I'm reading the chat now. Okay. Katie is awesome. One of my favorites. I agree. Everyone's saying thank you so much. I know some people are still behind. Can't wait to watch this. It's great, Emily. I'll just give you a spoiler. It was great. Alexandra Rojas, that's so amazing. I got a hard wipe of my mind. Come on, somebody. Did you get a sippy bottle? I got you, bro, right here. Look it, I got you. Got the sippy bottle so I don't have to tilt and pour. Just sip right out of it. It's water, guys, by the way. Look how cool. That's a cool... I just realized how cool that bottle is. We got a bunch of these bottles, but... What does yawning mean? Uh, it can mean a demon leaving you. It could be a manifestation. Yeah, one of the best ever. I agree. Wow, what a night. I feel like... I feel electric right now. I feel like the electricity of the Holy Spirit still. I'm going to let the donations catch up that are on screen. A lot of them still coming through there. Awesome, awesome night. Learn so much. Um, I'm not sure about the ebook. Maybe you'll get an email. Isaiah's the fastest reader. I, I think I am. If you say we have Jesus on a cross, it's an idol. Yes, do not have Jesus on a cross. He's not on a cross anymore. I would take that away. Don't wear necklaces with him on the cross. If you wear a cross necklace, make sure that Jesus is not there because he's not on the cross anymore. He's alive and well. Katie does have deliverance at her services as well. My sippy bottle. Dr. Nundy, thank you. So thanks for your obedience. Appreciate you. Thank you, Lord. He's risen. Yes, he's risen. Jesus is not on the cross. Do push up strengthen you spiritually? I don't think so. 222,000 subscribers. Yes. Isaiah, I'm a new born again Christian. Give me some advice on my new life. Don't look back. Don't look back. Write it down in your journal. Don't look back. Go forward. The devil's going to try to get you to look back on your old life. Keep going forward. Do you use eye drops? No, I don't. He's alive. Just became a monthly partner. When do I get my merch discount? Cat, right after I'm done. Or Kate, right after I'm done with this, I'll send you your monthly partner email. You'll get the discount code right away. I send them out personally from my personal email. So you'll get it right away. Praise the Lord. What a night. My face got healed. Jocelyn, awesome. Um, I've seen people blow air of the Holy Spirit onto people and they get delivered, so I don't think it's bad. Uh, I don't do that personally, Freddie. I don't know if you're asking or you're just making a statement. Jesus did blow on the disciples and they received the Holy Spirit, but I personally don't do it. Don't look back. That's my advice to you. My back's been healed. Come on, somebody. Thanks for letting the Lord use you. Thank you for appreciating it. When will this up so I can watch it? It's up right now. You could scroll back right now and watch it. But it'll be up right when we're done. But it's up right now as well. Yeah, if you want to rewind the broadcast, you could also rewind. No ads during the live. You could rewind it and watch it. When is our partner meeting? This Thursday night at 6 o'clock. Tomorrow, all my partners, you need to get on my Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. If you didn't get the email by tomorrow, noon Pacific, get on there and I'll send it to you manually. Get on there and comment saying you didn't get it. I have a video, Anonymous, that you just donated. I have a video on how to overcome lust. That you can check out. I got delivered from food idols. Awesome. I don't think there's anything wrong with cross necklaces. Just make sure Jesus is not on them. Praise the Lord. Any new merch coming? So I'm down for, I want to say, 8 to 12 new designs in December. The problem is you're supposed to drop like two designs a month. And I drop like all of them when I get them. So... December will for sure have 8 to 12 new designs and possibly more before. But that's in two months. So, yeah. Hopefully, I'll get some more out soon. It's just not really a huge priority right now. And my designer, it takes it takes time to get him to do, you know, it's like it's a wait list to get on there. He's a great designer. So, I want to make sure it's just like real high quality stuff. You know what I mean? But, yeah, I want to make some more tech shirts, just simple tech shirts. I mean, I could design them as well. I know to design and stuff like that. I just... Haven't had the time to be bothered with it. You guys got to remember, I got four children as well. So they keep me busy. That's my main ministry. Praise the Lord. A lot of people got delivered from smoking tonight. Partner Zoom is when? Thursday night, Linda. Thursday night. Six o'clock Pacific. I'll post about it tomorrow. Bring your merch to Fresh Start this November. I don't have in-person merch. I only have online. Thank you, Alexandra and all the mods. You guys are legends for not only moderating, but always posting in the chat. Guys, if you haven't liked the video yet, okay, let's look at this here. 
Okay, I can't say anything because we have 2,100 likes and 1,600 of you. But there's still some of you that haven't liked the video. So please make sure that you like the video. Really does help, guys, to like the video. All of you YouTube, still 1,600 of you on YouTube, make sure you like the video. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Um, do you think false leaders can be blowing demons on people saying it's an impartation from God? I mean, it's possible. But I'm not one to like say this person's false, this person's false, but it's definitely possible. Keep both blue and purple. Yeah, it looks good, right, Eddie? I like the blue and the purple. I'm gonna get off here soon, guys. We've been live for over two hours. My girls, what do they watch? Um, I mean, they don't watch too much stuff, honestly. I don't really know. Peppa Pig, my the only one that really watches stuff is my is Har Harvest, my two year old. And honestly, my kids will turn something on and then they just go run around the house and destroy the house. They don't really even watch anything. They just mess up the house. So it's hard to say what they watch because to get them to sit and watch something is is hard. But my my Harvest likes watching like Peppa Pig. She used to watch Coco Melon, the like kids nursery songs. I don't know really what they watch. Honestly, they don't really watch much stuff. Um, you have a Go XLR? Yes, I do. I have a Go XLR Mini. When are you going to restock? What restock? What? It should all be in stock. What is not in stock? Mm -mm -mm. What's not in stock? I just got here. Go be with your kids. I will be soon. My kids are about to go to bed. Actually, is it bad to be born on Halloween? I mean, it's not bad. It's not your choice when you're born. Listener kids. Yeah, a lot of people are saying watch listener kids. I guess it's like a Christian. Yeah, my kids watch VeggieTales too. It's like a Christian thing, right? Kim, thank you so much for the donation. Appreciate you. Thank you. I think some of you are requesting money from me instead of uh, when you meant to give. What is going on? Oh, never mind. Thank you, Lord. Sorry, I was looking at something on my phone. Superbook? Yeah, we actually have all the Superbooks, too. Gordon Robertson. I know this is kind of like a weird flex, but he actually sent me all the Superbooks. He came to one of our services. Um, that's Pat Robertson's son, and he sent me, like, literally every Superbook. VeggieTales was the best. Yeah. Yeah, my kids watch Superbook occasionally. I don't have cash up, Cassie. Sorry, I'll, I got locked out of it. They won't tell me why, but I'm just locked out of it. I'm going to wait. Oh, man, we're really behind on the on-screen donations, I think. Let's see. I think we're way behind there. Right? Are we? Yeah, we're way behind. Thank you, Lord. I'm reading all your guys' comments here. Yeah, I know. That was like a weird flex. I wasn't really trying to, but it's, it's just a cool thing. Because he, he said he was going to send me them, but he actually did. Some people say they're going to, but they don't. Bla glasses back on. Why? Because my eyes burn with the contacts. By the end of two hours, it feels like someone's put Tabasco sauce in my eyeball. So that's why I have glasses on. Because it doesn't feel good to have chili in your eye. And it's like, am I really going to put eye drops in live on stream? And I had to take out my contacts last time live on stream. And it was like my second time taking contacts out in five years. And I pinched my eyeballs. So... Some of the shirts are out of stock. I don't know why, Carol, um, Carolina, Carolina. They shouldn't be. Sure, I hope they'll go on soon. It's a pretty big company that does my stuff. Did you see my question? I haven't, Melissa. Sorry, it's, it's going, the chat's going quick here. I'm working on a new studio, guys. So be praying for me because I'm trying to figure out what I want to do or how, what, what the layout I want to do. I want more room in the back. I just want it different. I'm not going to have these sound panels. These have been almost here for two years. It's time to change it up. I did get like a neon sign. I got some new lighting and some cool stuff that I want to do, but I'm just trying to figure out. I thought about going like the more contemporary route, you know, like the bookcase and stuff. And I was like, nah, that's not me. I like the lights and I like the the tech look. You know what I'm saying? I, I like the different look. 
I'm too wild and crazy for like the brown bookcase or just like the neutral background. I'm too crazy for all that. I'm too hyper for that. No, I don't like green screens. I actually have a green screen. Green screens will never look good like a real background or clear like a real background. So I'm not I'm not a fan of the green screens. They look they just look cheesy to me. I only use green screens when I'm watching the show, The Chosen, because it cuts out my background. Is it okay to pass out tracks on Halloween? Yeah, it's fine. Thank you, Austin, for donating on Zell. What Bible commentary would you recommend? I like the Matthew Henry concise new language. That's more deeper. Or the new, the Life Application Study Bible is a great beginner commentary. Life Application Study is great. Can you say hi to Emma? Yes. Hi, Emma. Hi, Zayn. Shout out to you guys. The margins. What's the margins? I don't know what you're talking about. Ba -ma -ma -ma. Isaiah, look like a gamer with a new studio. Oh, he's going to look like a gamer with a new studio. I think I already do look like a gamer with this studio. But yeah, I'm going to look probably even more like one. But it's okay. It's People come in. They're like, wait, what, is this guy playing games? No, he's preaching the gospel. It's different. It keeps it fresh, you know? Neon cross in the background. I have a cool neon sign I got. Well, I hope it's cool. It's almost here. It's custom made. And I've been waiting a month and a half for it. So it's going to be coming, I think, tomorrow or the next day. I can't, I can't wait for you guys to see it. I hope I incorporate it in my new setup. But it's a really cool, cool sign. Mm -mm -mm. Idolatry talk? What are you talking about, Ryan? How is, how is lights and studios idolatry? No one's worshiping it. Is that a ghost? What? Is what a ghost? Is that ghost? What are you talking about? Awesome, Tirza. Can't wait to see it. Don't be hating on my lights. Don't be hating on the studio. This is one of the ways we bring people in and they click on our video and then they end up getting saved. It's evangelism. Amazon. Yes, Kyra. Amazon. Kira. Oh, video games, Ryan. Oh, I got you. I didn't know someone was talking about video games. Mm -mm -mm. I got you, Ryan. I got you, bro. Sorry, I was getting all defensive there. Uh, yeah, I've had Daniel on before a few times. He's a good, He's a friend. Mm -mm 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 -mm. can we get pink lights uh, i don't have pink set up i just have purple set up it's kind of pink though if i mix the lights uh let's see can we get no that's not the right mix i don't know i could set up a pink one i just don't have it set up uh let's see maybe i can mix these to get them pink no it's not really pink i mean i could custom set it i could custom set it but is that Oops, nope, that's not right. That's disco. Hold on. I don't want to give anybody a seizure here. Well, I guess we're getting that because it's stuck there. So now we got a little disco going on in the background. We love your lights. I know you guys do. I resent the question. I'm looking, Melissa, for it. I'm looking for it, Melissa. Bear with me. I don't see it. There's a lot of comments coming in, and I have a little disco going on in the background. A little dance party's happening. I don't see it, Melissa. I, I see your comment saying, did you see my question? Send it again. Spam it until I, oh wait, I think, is this it? Uh, nope, don't see it. Just spam it again, Melissa. Can we see your entire studio or that would be weird? Uh, I have my cameras on tripod, so I can't really show you right now. Do your kids watch The Chosen? No, they haven't. I don't think, I don't know, mate. I think they're too young. I don't think they'd be able to. My nine-year-old loves even more when you put the pink lights. Melissa, I didn't see it. Say it again. I'm reading all the comments right now, guys. I just got distracted by the disco going on in the background. IG studio tour, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, these are all... Oh, well, it is what it is. We're just going to have disco for the rest of the night. Hope you guys don't mind because I'm not going to change all of them right now. Kind of feeling the disco, right? I could actually strobe them, but I don't want to give anyone a seizure on accident. Okay. Melissa said, thank you. I, I, I don't see your thing. I don't know why I'm, I don't know why I'm not. Either you're delayed or I, I don't know. Oh, wait. Okay. I see it. I was sleeping and I was smelling sulfur in my sleep. When I woke up, there was no sulfur. What does it mean? I don't know, Melissa. Sulfur people, some people say well, in their deliverance, they've smelled sulfur and it could be something demonic, but I'm not positive. I can't give you like a solid, this is what sulfur means. You just got to pray about it. And ask the Lord. 
I don't want to give you a meaning and then you take it to the bank and then it's not, you know what I mean? Oh, and I have the music going. Okay, I see. Got a little, got a little thing going here. Put the music up a bit. How's that, guys? Please put slow mode on comments. Kelsey Adkins, thank you. So your live streams help me so much. I'll give more as I can. God bless you in the Holy Spirit tonight. Thank you, Kelsey. I will not put it on slow mode because the chat will go crazy. And the reason why I know they'll go crazy because when I'm in people's streams that are slow mode, it drives me crazy when I'm trying to comment a second time. And there's, listen, there's some people that chat and they send paragraphs. There's some that just send like one word phrases. I'm the guy that's like, hey, what's up? Hey, how's it going? I send like one word things and the slow mode stops it and everyone will rage if I put slow mode because they're used to fast mode. So that's why I'm not going to do slow mode. It'll send everybody crazy. I promise you. I can't do the slow mode. It makes me crazy when people are in slow mode. I talk too much for slow mode. So yeah, we're not doing that. It's too late for that. We had to do that right when we started the stream. It's We've come too far to go into slow mode. This is too satisfying. Oh, it is? The music and the lights? <laughs> are the lights driving anyone crazy? Or to me, it's super distracting. I would never want this for like a whole stream. I'm trying to keep up, guys, with the, the comments. I'm reading most of them. Some of these questions are just too deep. I can't stop and answer them. I don't know about e-transfer, but I have all the links on screen. Someone said it's a vibe. I love you guys. I appreciate it. Soothy, it's a party in this room, right? My kids would be going crazy right now. I love the lights. I took a shower and y'all are still live. I know when I have friends that are live for a long time, I'll go do something, come back. I'm like, they're still live. We're still here. We're actually getting off here in a minute. We're just having a little dance party here in the back. A little uh, disco here. It's distracting. Yeah, I agree. All the Facebook people are saying it's distracting. All the YouTube people are like, I love it. That's a perfect description of Facebook versus YouTube. If you know what I'm saying there. Facebook doesn't like it. YouTube's loving it. I like the Kuna after it's super cool. I appreciate it. I like hanging out with you guys. It's a whole mood. I love it. <laughs> Someone said, <laughs> Ryan said it's <laughs> it's Pride Month in the Lord. <laughs> I don't know what that one me means, but it made me laugh. It's the greatest ever. It looks like nice. Let's get the party started. It's a vibe. It's not distracting. Let me see the strobe. Hold on, guys. I have a bunch of modes here that I haven't even messed with. I have jump mode. What is jump? I don't know what that is. Strobe mode. Okay, hold on. Don't look if you have epilepsy. Hold on. I'm trying to strobe it. Hold on. Hold on. I can't turn it off. Don't look. If you get seizures from strobing, don't look. I'm supposed to put a warning. There we go. Fade. Let's see that. I could link all these up to be the same, but I don't know why I don't have them all linked up. That's weird. I used to. Sorry, whoever I just gave a seizure on accident. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Oh, wait. Is that a different one? Is that different? Yeah, that's kind of cool, huh? I gotta sync them all up so they're the same. Sorry, my eyeballs. My eyeballs hurt right there in the blinking. You look like a police or a soldier? The police are behind me right now, y'all. The religious police, the religious cops are behind me. They're going to pull me over for doing too much deliverance. The religious police have a search warrant for me for asking them to turn the mic up when I'm preaching too loud. Religious people hate loud preaching, that's for sure. I got you, Ricky. Can a 12-year-old learn to cast their demons? Yes. I'm not going to lie, that strobe that I looked into kind of made me blind. All right, guys. Two more minutes and we're getting off here. This is the coolest live stream I've been on. I'm glad. Hey, we can have fun in the Lord. We could have fun here. Praise the Lord. Light party. Crying and laughing. I can't take it. What, the religious police? I could, well, I wonder if I could turn that blue and red. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna, you guys are gonna make me start like doing a skit over here. You're still chill, bro. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Robin. 
Love this, man. We love you too, Alexandria. I'm, I'm, <laughs> some of your guys' comments are making me laugh. I got you, Melissa. Go ahead and put it in the chat. Confuse the demon lights. I feel God's presence. I'm glad. Praise the Lord. Did you show the bobblehead yesterday? Yes, I did. He's right here alive and well. All right. There's your golden calf, Ryan. Hey, it looks kind of cool with the lights in the back right there. It's like watching a YouTube tutorial live, right? Am I you fave? Am, am, am you I fave? Wait, what are you talking about, K-Hype? K-Hype, we love you. You know that. You always bring flavor to the chat. Uh, Melissa, keep praying for him. That's all you can really do. Keep praying for him. Word was fire tonight. This is hilarious. I'm rolling. I'm glad you're laughing. I'm, I, you guys laugh at me a lot. I appreciate that. I don't know if I should think that's good or not. No, I appreciate you guys. The donations have still not caught up. I was waiting for them to catch up and they're still behind. Thank you to everyone sewing. You guys are awesome. They're almost caught up. Have you gone fishing lately? No, I haven't. Unfortunately, I've been really, really busy. Ever consider doing ASMR? No, definitely not. They already make videos about me because I preach on deliverance and all the religious people already don't like me. You think me doing ASMR is going to help? Am I your favorite? Uh, no, my wife's my favorite, K-Hype. You're definitely not my favorite. I like you, though. You're just not my favorite. Where'd you get the bobblehead? One of, someone from the stream sent it. Put the cop lights. No, I'm not going to. I'm tempted to, but I won't do it because then I'll start doing like a skit and making you guys laugh and uh, everyone's going to clip it and I'll embarrass myself. Can we see Charlie Peppercorn? No. No cats. No cats in the studio. I love spending time with you, chat. We appreciate you guys. No ASMR? No, we're not doing that. That's, nah. That's weird. Everyone's like, you should? No, we're not doing that. There's zero chance. No shot. I'm doing that. Bro, talk about hilarious. I met in the chat. Oh, are you my favorite in the chat? No, my favorite in the chat is my wife. Okay, hype. My wife's in the chat occasionally too. She's still my favorite. Sorry. Yeah, we're not doing ASMR. No, sorry. Cop lights. No ASMR, please. We're not going to, guys. I promise. Don't worry. Cops get. No, we're not. Don't get me started, guys. Do not get me started. You guys know my dream is to be a stand-up comedian, so... Sharp husband. <laughs> now that's love. Wait, is Alyssa in the chat? No, she's not in the chat right now. Oh, yeah, she is. She says, I listen to everyone. I just don't comment. She's my biggest fan, y'all. Fine, am I your second? No, actually, K-Hype, my second favorite person in the chat is my mom, who's always in the chat. Thank you, Logic. Logic? Logic, thank you. Say, God bless you, brother. My mom's my second. Sorry, K-Hype. Keep trying, though. Appreciate you. Is the music? Oh, yeah, the music's still going. I don't know what is going on with these lights, guys. Hold on. I'm getting... I'm getting... Enough. We need our eyes to relax here. We need our eyes to chill here. That is incredibly distracting. Let's let our eyes reset for a minute. Yeah, my dream was to be a police officer, and that's what I was going to school for when I got saved. No, no cops get. Isaiah, you're hilarious. Thank you. Do you stand up co comedy stand up? How funny would that be if I did a whole stream on that? What are you for Halloween? Born again in the spirit and truth. Let's go. Who's your third? Uh, my third is my dad. Consider I'm a mama's boy. You know, I got to be mom too. Dad three. I love you, dad, who just texted me. I hope he's not listening right now. My parents are always in the chat. My family's all in the chat. Heart beating fast. How do you guys feel now? How's your eyeballs now? Is that, can you relax now? That was stressful. I don't know why I let that happen for so long. Safe freeze. I think they shipped to Canada. This just got awkward for K-Hype. Sorry, K-Hype. My eyeballs feel weird. 
I got to get off here, guys. You guys are too fun. It's been two hours and 20 minutes. I appreciate every single one of you guys. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. I'm going to make sure that I get Katie something, send her something tonight. She was awesome. Amazing broadcast. Great stuff. Be praying for us. Friday night Zoom deliverance. Let's wreck the devil on Friday night. I hope he gets out of insurance policy because he's going to get wrecked on Friday night. Not Thursday, Friday. Thursday is the partner's call. Thursday night is a partner's call. All right, guys. I stayed 20 minutes extra. Uh, what's your take on abortion? It's murder. That's my take. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Just stay another hour. I wish. I'm going to get off here. The chat is just about caught up. I've read everything already. I mean, the donations, I've read everything. He needs house insurance because he's going to be homeless on Friday night. See you guys. I'll send the links out. If you monthly partner tonight, you'll get your links right after. Okay? Look at that merch. Go ahead. Look at that. Demons fear me. Look at that. How sick is that merch? That's on the website. Shameless plug. RevivalLifestyleApparel.com. Get it while it's hot. 25% off to all the monthly partners. Good night. Bye. Love you guys. You guys are the best. Love you. See ya. Bye. Love you guys. I'll send it right when it's done. If you sign up tonight, you'll get it right when it's done. If you've already signed up, check your spam or your trash box. Because sometimes they block my emails. See ya.